Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. The Yellow Pages, nine out of ten people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. The Pennsylvania Lottery, lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield for 56 years, the health insurance company you can lean on. Another sellout crowd here at Jack Russell Stadium today. The Phillies have had more this spring than at any other time since they've been playing here. And the fans are really going to get some summer-like weather here today. It is just a perfect, perfect summer afternoon here at Jack Russell Stadium. A lot of Cardinal fans over from St. Pete, I am sure. It's only the second meeting of the year between the Phillies and the Cardinals. And here's the way the running Redbirds go this afternoon. Bernard Gilkey leads off and plays left. Ozzie Smith is the shortstop. Greg Jeffries at first base. Todd Zeal, the third baseman. Mark Whitten plays right field. Brian Jordan plays center. Geronimo Pena is the second baseman. Eric Pappas will be behind the plate. And the Cardinals pitch a left-hander, Real Cormier. Defensively for the Phillies this afternoon, Mariano Duncan is playing first base. Mickey Morandini at second base. Kevin Stocker is the shortstop. And over at third base, Kim Batiste is filling in for Dave Hollins. Pete Incavilla is in left field with Lenny Dykstra in center and Tony Longmire in right. Darren Dalton is doing the catching this afternoon. And on the mound, six foot eight inch, 265 pound right hander Jeff Juden. Juden's a member of that uh, core that's trying to establish themselves as the fifth starter for the Phillies, along with Tyler Green, Bobby Munoz, and Mike Williams. He's making his fifth appearance of the spring and his second start and when you look at Juden's numbers over the course of the spring he's just continually progressed not only in uh, the number of innings that he's pitched he's added an inning on each time starting out with two three four and then five but also the effectiveness with which he has pitched so the big guy is making progress moving toward trying to establish himself as a part of that Philly uh, pitching staff on opening day. Jim Fergosi says the pitchers themselves will decide the issue and really at this point no one has really stepped forward to take over. Hopefully they will do that. Spring training ends one week from today. Here's Gilkey who really had a tremendous year for the Cardinals last year. Hitting at 240 this spring but he came of age last year. A lot of people thought that Gilkey might not make it but he started hitting and hitting with some power last year and he scored 99 runs for St. Louis. Take some guys a little longer than others to turn the corner, but it appears as if at least last year was the year that Guilty was able to accomplish that. Here's a fly for Lenny Dykstra. Goes over in the right center, plays it off to the side, which you see a lot of outfielders do down here because you have a very high, very bright sky. Thirty-nine-year-old Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith, and the headline news is that he did not win the Gold Glove last year after 13 straight years. He did not win it. That's amazing. But a lot of people say that he has not slackened off at all. He's hitting 329, so that'll tell you something right there in spring training. Juden's pitch is a little bit low. That's the National League's Mark Hirschbeck calling balls and strikes. We have all NL umpires. Frank Pulley's at first and Steve Ripley at third. Games in Clearwater must be Frank Pulley. Always here. Last year, Ozzie beat out 33 infield hits. Three balls and no strikes on Ozzie. Juden 1 0 in spring training, a 3.86 earned run average. He's pitched 14 innings here in the spring. In for a strike, and it's 3 and 1 on Ozzie Smith. Cardinals are having a great spring there, 13 and 7. The Phillies bring a record of 11 and 10 into the contest. Smith sends a fly down the left field line. Incavilia with room back in the corner. We don't have a whole lot of wind here today. Incavilia getting back into the corner to make that catch. But it shifted since you and I were looking at it earlier. Tiki was blowing from right to left or basically in. Now it's blowing the other way around. And now it's more back to normal blowing out the right field. Well, actually, at the beginning of the day, it was blowing straight down. <laughs> Flag was laying limp on the pole, but uh, now more like a clear water day. The wind blowing out the right field. Greg Jeffries hitting at 316. 
in spring training. No homers and five RBIs for Jeffries. He had a great year last year. Jeffries hit 342 with 16 homers, 83 runs batted in. He takes a strike. Jeffries looked comfortable at first base last year. He didn't play it in a great fashion. In other words, he did not dig a lot of balls out of the dirt. Ozzie Smith, for example, had more errors last year than normal. But at least it's his best infield position. Stocker makes the play, and down go the Cardinals. At the end of the half inning, St. Louis nothing. The Phillies coming up. Night, ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh no, it's Ted from Accounting. When he rips it to deep right field, back goes Quinn. It's out of here. Home run, Letty Dykstra. Deep to left center field. Way Let the games begin. The players get their championship rings. You receive a free schedule magnet from PA's new 610 area code. The Phillies host the Rockies. The Phillies home opener Monday, April 11th at 2.05. Call 463-1000. Scoreless going to the bottom half of the first, and here's the way the Phillies bat today. Lenny Dykstra leads it off. Mickey Morandini plays at second. Mariano Duncan is the first baseman. Pete Incavilla in left. Darren Dalton is the catcher. Kim Batiste as a third base. Tony Longmire is the right fielder. Kevin Stocker the shortstop and pitcher Jeff Juden. Defensively for Joe Torre St. Louis Cardinals this afternoon. Greg Jeffries is at first base. Geronimo Pena plays second base. The Wizard Ozzie Smith at shortstop and Todd Zeal at third base. Bernard Gilkey is a left fielder with Brian Jordan in center. The strong arm Mark Witten in right field. Eric Pappas doing the catching for the Cardinals this afternoon. And on the mound, 5 foot 10 inch, 185 pound left hander, Real Cormier. Cormier making his sixth start of the spring. He's not an overtower, overpowering type pitcher. So sinking fastballs and change ups does throw an occasional curveball. Now, for him to be effective, and it's always been the case with him, to, to get people out, he has to keep the ball down in the strike zone. When the ball is up in the strike zone, it is very hittable. He doesn't walk a whole lot of guys, so, you know, when you talk about Cormier being wild, you're not particularly talking about the base on ball. You're talking about the ball being up in the strike zone and him getting himself in a dangerous area with the hitters. You know, Teak, that not walking anybody has been typical of the entire Cardinal pitching staff. Bob Tewksbury annually has been a tough guy to draw a walk on, and... Those kind of things usually spread through a, stra a staff. Dykstra takes a strike, even though he was giving ground. When he's had a rough spring as far as getting his hits are concerned, carrying a 190 batting average, Lenny doesn't seem concerned about it, so if he isn't, I guess we shouldn't be. Nope. One of these days, though, he's got to start kicking them in. Opening day would be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They don't count <laughs> down here. That's when they start racking them up. Lenny has not attempted a stolen base here in spring training. No use wearing yourself out on that. Here's a looper to left field, but Gilkey moves over and makes the play. Dykes replies to Gilkey. That's the first out of the bottom half of the first inning. And here's Mickey Morandini. Now, he's had an outstanding spring. Mickey with a 289 average. He was leading the club in home runs for a while with three of them. He has now been surpassed by Tony Longmire. Tony with four. And Mickey with 16 runs scored. That's tied for the lead among all National League players. Swing and a miss at a Cormier fastball. Real Cormier issued 1.7 walks per nine innings last year. 
particularly tough on left handers who hit only 207 off him. And we might mention that the Philly lineup has quite a few lefties in there today. In spring training, you don't necessarily try to style your lineup. Well, Jim Fergosi has been trying to get his left handers in the lineup, but he's just hit a string of left handed opposing pitchers. And uh, there's a couple more coming up the next couple days. So you have to play them sometimes. So you know, you'd rather have the at bats against right handed pitchers, but it's better than no at bats at all. Cormier gets a strikeout, second out of the inning, and that'll bring to the plate Mariano Duncan. Talked about the sinking fastball from Cormier. Down and on the outside part of the plate. Eric Pappas sets out there. Cormier right in the center of the glove. Good two strike pitch. Skipper Joe Torrey out in the sunshine today. Torrey has uh, managed this club for the last three years. And they haven't made many changes this year, Teak, although baseball made one change on them. They are now in the central division. Realignment. Means the Phillies don't have to worry about them head to head any longer, except insofar as a possible wild card bid might be concerned. And Teak, since the Cardinals didn't make many offseason changes, you must get the impression that they think they're in position to contend. Well, they feel that they're in you know, a good position right now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Joe Torre would love to have some more pitching. I don't think anybody in baseball you know, would not. Uh, got bad news early with Donovan Osborne being out for the season. So you know, that's part of, part of his problem. But uh, you know, his everyday lineup, very satisfied with it. There's the Wizard with the pickup and the quick release. And down goes Duncan and down go the Phillies. At the end of an inning, it's nothing, nothing. Most luxury cars are assembled with spot welds. But for the J30, Infinity adopted a process called weld bonding that bonds entire seams. Over time, flex and stress can weaken spot welds. But when the entire seam is sealed, there are no weak points, which means a stronger, safer body that lasts longer. Visit your Infinity showroom. Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. There's a new kind of energy around here. A company that can meet your energy needs well into the next century without building even one new plant, which means no large increase in the cost of your service. A company whose oil-fired generators will also run on natural gas, another way to help keep your bill down. There's a new energy company around here and a new name. Pico Energy, focusing our energies on you. Most luxury cars are assembled with spot welds. But for the J30, Infinity adopted a process called weld bonding that bonds entire seams. Over time, flex and stress can weaken spot welds. But when the entire seam is sealed, there are no weak points, which means a stronger, safer body that lasts longer. Visit your Infinity showroom. Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. Interesting this morning out behind the Brain Trust was watching Norm Charlton take some practice tosses. Yeah, I'm Charlton for the second time in three days throwing batting practice. Another step in his progress toward getting ready. Talked to Norman before the game. He said, you know, his arm feels good. Everything feels really good right now. Of course, many interested observers behind the batting cage as Norman's doing his work this morning. But uh, everything seems to be on schedule, if not a little bit ahead for Charlton. But, you know, it's one of those things you got to wait and make sure with Charlton. Yeah, that's always been the Phillies approach to things as a cautious one. And when you're talking about an arm injury for a guy that could really help you down the stretch, you don't want to rush it. This is Todd Zeal leading off for the Cardinals. We're in the second of a scoreless game. Here's a play for Stocker. Zeal is out. And that's four in a row retired by Jeff Juden. Incidentally, Juden's old skipper. Art Howe, who is now a scout for the L.A. Dodgers, is here today. We had lunch with Art down in the press room today, and he was saying that a year ago this time, Juden had pitched well enough, in his opinion, to be the number five starter for the Astros, except that because of all the days off in April, there weren't going to be many occasions where they needed the number five, and he didn't think he could pitch out of the bullpen. Yeah, Juden had not had a whole lot of experience pitching out of the bullpen. Art says, you know, as it turned out, it was very fortunate for the Houston Ball Club last year because... They took Daryl Kyle because he could pitch out of the bullpen. Of course, Kyle turned in a tremendous season for the Astros, but uh, 
He did mention that Juden had pitched well enough last year that he could have been a number five starter had that number five starter been needed at the beginning of the season. Much the same situation that the Phillies are in this year. Yes, there's a battle for the number five starter, but in reality, that pitcher doesn't become a regular pitcher in the rotation until probably the second week in May. Tika, if Larry Anderson has to start the year on the DL, though, how does that change the mix? Well, I think what, you, you know, what you're looking for is you're looking for people who can be beneficial to you in the bullpen the first month of the season. You know, if you look at the Phillies roster, especially the pitching part of the roster right now, and the Phillies have stated that they are going to take 11 pitchers, there are probably four pitchers that you would consider on the bubble. You know, a couple of them in that mix for the fifth starter, a couple of them, you know, relievers. But uh, you got Tyler Green, Jeff Juden, Heathcliff Slocum, and Mike Williams. Of those four, the way things stand right now without any other changes is get the base hit the right field by Witten. If there are no other changes at this point, three of those four make the staff. So it's basically the fact that you know, one person will be eliminated out of that quartet. And the person more likely to be eliminated would be a person who could not be used in both roles. And that would certainly speak well for guys like Mike Williams and for Bobby Munoz. Here's Brian Jordan talking about bright futures. How about this guy? 14 RBIs to lead his ball club here in spring training and a 366 batting average for the ex defensive back of the Atlanta Falcons. Hey. Juden pours it in for a strike. The Cardinals have the luxury of having four outfielders who could all be regulars on other clubs, and Joe Torrey's job is to rotate them. The guy, the odd man out today is Langford. Yeah, Torrey is <coughs> that he is not going to set with three outfielders. He's going to use all four of them and uh, rotate them in and out of the lineup. Runner goes. Beauty of a throw, but a stolen base for Whitten. He just beat the throw. The throw was not bad at all. Mark Whitten gets his second stolen base of spring training. Jeff Juden with the big leg kick. Mark Witten able to get a good jump to second base. Dalton with a good strong throw, just able to get in underneath it. But, uh, you know, that's one of those bases that you steal on the pitcher. Got a good jump. Juden, of course, being six foot eight, takes a while for him to wind up and unload the ball to home plate. And that, you know, Witten with his good speed, just able to outrun the ball to second base. Nothing wrong with the throw from Dalton. Swing and a miss. Jordan strikes out. Juden gets his first strikeout, second out of the inning. Coming to the plate now for St. Louis, their second baseman, Geronimo Pena. He's having a good spring. 363 is his average. A guy who has been hurt a lot throughout his career. And you know, the Cardinals might be doing the same thing at second base this year that they're doing in the outfield. That is to say, juggling two players. Pena being one, and Luis Alicea being his counterpart. Yeah, and Pena in the past been a switch hitter, now hitting exclusively right-handed this season. So the powers to be have decided or Pena with the powers to be have decided that uh, you know to spend the entire season on the right side of the dish and that's not typical Cardinal either because no. they, they over the years they have loved switch hitters they've at times had a lineup full of them yeah they used to they still do have quite a few and they collect switch hitters it used to be the two qualifications you need to play for the Cardinals you had to be able to, able to run like the wind and hit from both sides they still steal a lot of bases. They stole 153 last year, second in the league. The Expos led the league. But we still call them the running Redbirds. Two and nothing on Pena. That's a strike. Two and one. Art Howe had some good news about Jeff Juden. He said he is a real battler. He says he's got good stuff. He has big league stuff. And he says he is a tremendous competitor. You get him between the white lines and he will battle you. Three balls and a strike. Getting late in spring training, the guy that makes the pristine impression at this point could get the job. Jim Fregosi is waiting to have his eyes open, waiting to be dazzled. Yeah, last year it was a very simple case. That number five fight that was on last year, Tommy Green just grabbed the ball and ran away with it and just left everybody in the dust. That has not happened this spring. That's a good pitch, full count. 
fact, if you remember last year, Tommy did such a great job that he was fighting for the number five job, and by the time the season started, he ended up in the number four slot, and uh, Big Ben Rivera had been moved down to the five spot. So, uh, you know, that was a dominant performance last year, but that has not been the case this spring. And with Terry Mulholland traded, why everybody moves up at least a notch. Ball four. And the Cardinals have two men on with two away. Eric Pappas coming up. We talked about Cardinal difficulties. They're battling injuries too, and their number one catcher, Tom Pagnazzi, suffered a knee injury. Second one on the same knee in the last couple of months. So he's out now for a while. And Pappas, who a year ago this time was a non roster player, all of a sudden is being heavily counted on. Pappas takes a strike. He's hitting only 130 in the spring. No homers, four runs batted in for Pappas. And it looks like his backup is going to be Terry McGriff, who is a non roster player with the Cardinals right now. One ball, one strike. Chased the high one. Juden got away with a pitch up about the eyeballs. Yeah, high fastballs are easy to handle, but high fastballs out of the strike zone become much more difficult. This ball, Juden throwing the ball in the 90 plus range up in Pappas, Pappas's eyes, just not able to catch up with that one. It looks good until you try to get the bat to it. Then all of a sudden it gets real small. The 1 2 pitch. Dalton thought he had it started heading for the dugout but did not hear the call from Mark Hirschbeck. It's a 2 2 count. There's Mark tuning up for the National League season which opens a week from tomorrow. That's right a Sunday night opener this year. In Cincinnati. Breaking ball just missed. Cincinnati Reds are going to be opening against the St. Louis Cardinals on April 3rd. Well, we'll have the runners on the move now. We've got a full count on the hitter, Pappas. Breaking ball hit hard, but it's Stocker. He'll make the play to first base, and it's caught by Duncan, who maintains the bag. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. No runs, a hit, two left. Go to the bottom of the second, scoreless. When he rips it to deep right field, back goes Quinn. It's out of here. Home run, Lenny Dykstra. Deep to left center field. Way back, this ball is a grand slam. Home run, Darren Dalton. Deep to left field, Aaron Davis going back. Still going back, he can't. The Phillies try to make the Reds run off a white surrender flag Friday, April 15th at 7.35. And again Saturday, it's when fans 14 and under receive a free photo ball baseball featuring different National League champion Phillies players. And Sunday, April 17th at 1.35, when kids 14 and under receive a free keychain with a replica of the Phillies National League championship ring. Reserve your tickets in advance. Call 463-1000 now. The right car should be safe and dependable. The right car should have a V6 engine, front-wheel drive, and a driver's side airbag. It should be comfortable, and it should have room for five adults, a theft deterrent system, and keyless entry. But most of all, the right car should be easy to get into. Lease a Maxima GXE with no down payment and $289 a month for 36 months. At the current moment, Pete Incavilia leads all National League hitters in spring training with a 475 average. Before the game, I talked to Inky, and I was asking him if this was normal for him in spring training and what he had done to prepare to get off to such a great start this spring. First two weeks of spring training, went down to the complex. I hit every morning at 9 o'clock with Vuki. I take a lot of swings. That's, that's, that's how I build my strength. That's how I build my bat speed. And uh, 
you know, I just seem to carry over what I was doing last year into this year, and uh, I'm seeing to knowing myself a little bit more, you know, making those adjustments a little bit quicker at the plate instead of, you know, taking three or four bats or even a day. I'm doing it from a pitch to a pitch to, you know, uh, at bat to at bat instead of, you know, like day to day. So uh, I'm real happy with the way I'm progressing. I feel like I'm swinging the bat well, and my bat speed's where I want it, and uh, I'm looking forward to another big year for our ball club. And here is Inky to lead off the inning, leading the Phillies with 19 hits, as Teak mentioned, a 475 batting average, three homers, a dozen RBIs. I did ask Inky when we were done with that interview if he considered himself a contender for the batting title this year because he's <laughs> in the league in spring training. He said, no, I think my game's more of an RBI game. I'm going to stick with that. I would think so. Cormier starts him with a breaking ball, which misses. It'll be Incavilla, Dalton, and Batista hit here in the second of a scoreless ball game. Going in, two balls and no strikes on Incavilla. Hickey has the second top slugging percentage of any National Leaguer, 875. He brings a five game hitting streak into the contest. Make it six. Make it six. Zeal couldn't get it. Right under the glove of Zeal to the left of him, and a base hit for Incavilla, first for the Phillies today. Right on cue. His 20th hit of spring training. Like when those, those players perform right on cue. Sure helps. Time to get a base hit. Boom. Got get a one. hit. Maybe it's time for Darren Dalton to get his first home run, you think? Wins. Oh, wind shifted again. Uh oh. Shouldn't have said that. that <laughs> bad, bad time to predict it. Darren hitting at 353, so he's had plenty of other hits. Pappas fights a ball in the dirt, and it's a strike because Darren swung at it. You mentioned there are a lot of left-handers in the Phillies lineup. Of course, Dalton is one who would play day in and day out, regardless of who's on the mound. Another scoop by Pappas. Somebody not probably in that category who's in there today is Tony Longmire. Mickey Moore and Jamie probably not play as much against left-handers as he would against right-handers. Right. Cormier, Cardinals want him to throw his curveball for strikes. They want him to be able to pitch with a little more confidence. He gets this one over. One and two, the count on Dalton. I asked Cardinal pitching coach Joe Coleman, who would follow Cormier today, he said, well, we're going to go by situations today. He's got three other hurlers, so we might see some mid-inning changes for the Cardinals today. As the ball. One of those who will be pitching is Mike Perez, and the Cardinals are grooming him to be their closer this year. Of course, Lee Smith's been the Cardinal closer for quite a while, and uh, he was moved last year toward the end of the season, so there is a void. Another opportunity for a young player to step forward and establish himself. Lee Smith will see him one week from today in Baltimore. That's our next Sports Channel telecast, and at 1.30 next Saturday afternoon, the Phillies and the Orioles in the final spring game for both teams at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Probably won't be quite this warm, I wouldn't think. There's a big pop-up in the infield. Going to be a play for Jeffries, and he grabs it in foul ground. Dalton fouls to Jeffries and fails to advance the runner. Batiste coming up. Kim hitting at 228, two homers, six RBIs. <clears throat> a busy spring for Kim. He's played all over the ballpark. Outfield, third base, shortstop, first base. I guess he skipped second this year. He's also the emergency catcher. Now, he hasn't been in a game behind the plate, but he has worked out some there. Cormier with a lot of breaking balls. Cormier came into the game having pitched 21 spring innings. Only three National League pitchers had pitched more in spring training. Right now, Cormier is penciled in to be the third starter for St. Louis. Looks like Bob Tewksbury and Rene Arrocha will precede him in the rotation. Alan Watson will also be a starter. And uh, I think they signed Rick Sutcliffe to be number five, but he has not had a good spring. 
Well, the Cardinals, you know, with that hole that was created by Osborne late, had to do a little scrambling trying to, they were counting on Osborne being in that rotation. So they had to try to make an adjustment, brought Sutcliffe in. As you said, he hasn't pitched all that well this spring, but, you know, sometimes you will take a veteran pitcher like a Sutcliffe and toss a little bit of that spring training information out the window and say, well, let's at least start the season with the guy and see what he does when, you know, when the game's on the line. Oh, Batiste had a rip at a fastball that was a little bit up. Two and one on Kim. Phillies in the cards in a scoreless ball game. Phillies in the cards going to meet once more next Thursday here at Jack Russell Stadium in the final Florida spring training game for both teams. In the air, right side, Jeffries over, and the ball is foul out of play. A souvenir for some sun drenched fan and we don't have as we mentioned earlier a lot of breeze today so if you're sitting out in the sun it's hot it's full bake today we were kind of toasty out there with our <laughs> new blue sports channel shirts on they soak up that sunshine Batiste strikes out that strikeout number two for Cormier his second out of the inning When you go up to hit against Cormier, you're thinking about the ball down in the strike zone. This time he surprised Batty a little bit with a fastball up and out over the plate. Much slimmer to a pitch he threw about two pitches before, and uh, Batty just kind of waved at it. It was out of the strike zone for a ball, but uh, you know, possibly those breaking balls early in the count had implanted that in his mind, and he was thinking breaking ball again. Longmire, we talked about him in the opening, the fact that he hit two home runs for the Phillies yesterday and now has the club lead with four. Also the RBI lead with 15. Tony hitting a cool 368 here in the spring. Out of options so the Phillies wanted him to make the team if he could demonstrate so this spring and he certainly has. Ball on a strike on Longmire. Getting some playing time in right field now. You know, Jim Eisenreich has been absent, be absent because of the birth of a child, which has now occurred. But Jim's been away for a long time, and you know whether he'll be able to get back and get right into the swing of things. Who knows? So I think that's uh, another reason why he's getting some uh, playing time in right field. Jim and Leanne Eisenreich. Welcome their second child on the 22nd, Tyler James. Nine pounds and ten ounces. Newest member of the Philly family. Longmire destroys a pitch apparently he thought was a strike. We well, mentioned Cormier, very tough on left-handed hitters. It's a little bit of a crossfire in his motion, so he's throwing the ball from behind the left-handed hitter. Very good, and we've seen it so far this afternoon about being able to keep the ball on the outside part of the plate to those left-handers. So, you know, when the ball starts coming from behind them, the tendency is to pull off a little bit, and it makes it much more difficult to reach that outside part of the plate. 2-2 on Longmire. Struck him out. That was a good inning for Cormier, who gave up a leadoff single and then got him 1-2-3. At the end of two today, it's nothing-nothing. Is this space taken? No. Then I'll sit down. You want a Bud Light? Not yet. Hey, hey, wait a minute. That's my Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. How about a little help here? <clears throat> retirement? I'm too young to be worried about retiring. I'm set. I've been socking away a little of my paycheck every month. The same company for almost 20 years. They'll take care of me. You bet I got my nest egg covered. In these uncertain financial times, turn to Nationwide Financial Services for a wide range of investment alternatives, most of which are tax advantaged. Because someday soon, the quality of your life 
may depend on the quality of your investments. It's Saturday. I'm not going to mow the lawn. I'll hire him to mow the lawn and paint the garage. No, the garage. I'm dreaming big with Super 7. I'll buy a car. No, cars. Meet exotic people. Not him. Her. I'll be in the money. Moolah. Saturday. Super 7. If I can dream it, I can win it. Ball fans 14 and under receive a free photo ball baseball featuring different National League champion Philly players. Compliments of Burger King. When the Phillies rip roar against the Cincinnati Reds. Saturday, April 16th, 7.05. For tickets, call 463-1000. On April 6th, the Inquirer has a triple treat for Phillies fans. Three of your favorites, Lenny Dykstra, Kurt Schilling, and Darren Dalton in a full-color, glossy photo with the Phillies' 94 schedule. It makes a really nice collectible. And you'll find this handsome 10 by 13 picture of Dykstra, Schilling, and Dalton with the Phillies' schedule only inserted inside the April 6th Inquirer. We go to the third inning here at Jack Russell Stadium. Phillies and the Cardinals are scoreless, and pitcher Real Cormier fouls the first pitch from Jeff Juden. Cormier hit 234 last year with 11 hits. He's a 173 lifetime hitter. Two base runners for the Cardinals so far. They have one hit and one walk. There's a breaking ball, pounded foul, and it's nothing and two now on Cormier. Swing in the bat and drop it. That's casual. <laughs> Nothing in two on the Cardinal pitcher. Another breaking ball. Juden giving Cormier a steady diet of breaking balls. Fielder Pete Incavilia really playing shallow for Cormier, who pounds, or tries to pound another one, but that he missed that one. So that's strikeout number two for Juden, and first out of the inning. Jeff Juden in the past, his problem has always been, you know, the walks. He's had a major league arm, good stuff, hard to hit, but he's walked about four batters a ball, or four batters every nine innings that he's pitched. This spring, he has five walks in 14 innings, which is only one about every three innings. But four of those five came in his first outing. So uh, since then, you know, since that first outing, his control has been a lot sharper than Juden has shown in the past. And he has one walk today in the first couple of innings, walking pain in the second. But you know, I think that's a pitcher that has that kind of stuff. That's sometimes the last hurdle that they have to get over, and a lot of that. It's because of the fact they finally have confidence in their stuff. They feel that my stuff is good enough. I can just throw it over the plate and challenge hitters. I don't have to pitch quite as much. Sound like a broken bat out of Gilkey. Stocker makes the play and Gilkey is out. Two up and two down here in the third. And there's nothing not to like about Jeff Juden today. Happy 70th birthday today to John Peck of Parksburg, Pennsylvania. Ozzie Smith coming up, flied out to left field, his first at bat this afternoon. The Wizard enjoying a fine spring with a 329 batting average. Ozzie's got one of those self perpetuating contracts. If he gets a certain number of at bats every year, and I've forgotten how many it is, his contract already kicks in for the next year. You do the job, you keep the job. And he flares a single to left field. Hit number two for St. Louis. Opposite field single for Ozzie Smith. Last year, Smith, by the way, stole 21 bases, so he will still run. Two at bats, the same approach by Smith. The first time he gets the ball in the air to left field, flew out the Incavilia. This time, able to get the ball, the bat on top of the ball, and drive it on a line through the left side of the infield. That's what the Wizard was trying to do the first time, but he just wasn't able to get on top of the ball. Greg Jeffries, he's 0 for 1, ground ball to short. The Wizard, every time he goes to the plate, he goes up there with a plan. <laughs> Juden missing with another breaking ball. It looks like he's trying to work on that breaking ball today, and he's had some success with it. 
well, he's been able to get it into the strike zone. And, you know, when you can throw your breaking ball for a strike, it makes your fastball even better. And, of course, we know Juden's got the great arm and the good fastball. There's a called strike. By the way, there was a right-hander who was with the Pirates years ago, Mike Dunn, who's been in the Phillies minor league camp this spring. He's here at the game today in uniform, and if there's a chance, the Phillies might give him an inning. I guess you remember a lot about Mike Dunn, don't you? I remember when Mike Dunn first came over to the Pirates. Strong young prospect, and then had some arm injuries. He's really put his career on hold. Now trying to work his way back to the big leagues, coming up through the farm system again. You know, it's tough enough to do that once, but to have to go through that whole process twice in your career has to be mentally defeating, I would think. Well, you don't want to let go easily. I saw where the Ooh. Texas Rangers released Kenny Howell the other day. It was surprising to me that Kenny Howell was still giving him the shot. Ozzie was running on that pitch. He's all the way down at second base. Two balls and two strikes on Jeffries. With two outs, Ozzie trying to get himself in scoring position. First base going to take an extra base hit by Jeffries to score him if he's able to steal second base, of course, would score on almost any single. Tik, you know, baseball salaries being what they are these days, though I guess there is more incentive than there used to be for a guy at the end of his career to try to, to stick around. Ozzie is holding. Jeffries gets a late swing and fouls it. Still two and two on Jeffries. Talk about salaries, of course. You know the established major league player; their salary is elevated. And so at, at the end of your career, if you can tack on another year or two, of course, that's that's big bucks. And then you know you get the other scenarios, you know the Kenny Howes and the Mike Dunns, who have not spent a whole lot of time in the big leagues. But you know if they can get back, salaries being what they are, they can make up for a lot of lost time. In the air and well hit to left center field. Hank Gavilia wraps it up, and the inning is over. You're watching Phillies Baseball on Sports Channel. No runs, a hit, one left. We move to the bottom of the third. Nothing, nothing. When he rips it to deep right field, back goes Quinn. It's out of here. Home run, Lenny Dykstra. Deep to left center field. Way back, this ball. Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by Pico Energy. There's a new kind of energy around here, Pico Energy. And we get energized just looking at those palm trees here in Florida because that just reminds you where you are and how nice it is down here and how great it is to be able to tune up for the regular season in conditions like this. I'm Andy Musser with Kent DeColby. We go to the bottom of the third, scoreless ball game. Kevin Stocker and Things have been looking up for him lately, Teak. His average is on the rise. He was down in the 140s, and it's up to 195 now. Well, it was a struggle early in the spring for Kevin, but, uh, you know, much as was the case last year when he came up to the ball club and was hitting so well, the most important part of his game is still the defensive side of the game, and that has not wavered one bit this spring. No, and that will still be the case even if he hits 350. I mean, you need a guy to catch the ball, and if you don't believe that, just look where the Phillies have been in recent seasons before he arrived. Down to the left field corner and hit hard. Off the wall and in play. 
Stocker in a second with a two base hit. First extra base blow of the afternoon, a double for Stocker. Mentioned Cormier has to keep the ball down in the strike zone to be effective. This one up. Bingo, right on the big part of the bat. Stocker hits it in the left field corner about two or three feet from the top of the wall. Very well stroked. Didn't have much altitude on it. It was well hit. Bernard Gilkey has to chase it back down off that concrete block wall out there. Kevin Stocker easily just cruises into second base with a leadoff double for the Phillies. Jeff Juden's job is clear, and that is to get the runner at third with one out. There are no outs here. Juden will be up there probably to bunt. Could do it on a grounder to the right side, but let's see what happens here. He has never had a big league hit. Juden is 0 for 5. Bunts it. And the play will be to first. It looked like it might be caught in the air for a moment. It wasn't a really good bunt, but it did get the job done. Pappas to first. And the runner has been moved. Well, the ball was in the air, but Jeff Juden did a nice job of getting the ball out on the end of the bat when he bunted it. When you bunt the ball, you try to bunt it toward the end of the bat because it will kill the ball. It won't carry quite as far. You see right here, the ball bunted out about two inches from the end of the bat. Had he got it in the good part of the bat, it probably would have carried far enough where Cormier could get to it, but because he got it on the end, it died in the grass. Pappas has to make the play to first base. Juden gets the job done. Here's Dykstra to try to get the afternoon's first run in. Honey has knocked in three this spring. First at bat today, he flied out to left field. Cardinals are in at the corners, back in the middle. Dykstra fouls it. About halfway in the middle, really. It's an interesting kind of defense. They're not in tight, but they're not real deep either. And as I say, they are in at the corners. Well, defensively, what the Cardinals are saying is if you hit the ball hard right at either Ozzie Smith or Geronimo Pena, they think that they're going to have a play at the plate. But if the ball is just a routine ground ball, then they're going to take the out at first base. Ozzie sneaking in as the pitch is delivered. He wound up almost in at the edge of the grass. He's coming in with the pitch. The wizard, if nothing else, knows how to play a hitter. You know, he doesn't have a great throwing arm, and he's compensated in two ways. A great release and knowing where to play. Strike one and two on Lenny. And not only is he creeping in, which you know is giving the hitter one look when you take a look before the pitcher comes into a set, and then Ozzy's going to be a different place. But that time, the pitch before he was moving straight in. That time he was sort of sliding over toward the third base hole because he had picked up the location from Eric Pappas. Knew that the pitch from Cormier was supposed to be outside. Of course, Dykstra would have more of a tendency to push that ball toward the hole. Two and two on Lenny. It's amazing the great ones. It's not just you know catching the ball and throwing the ball. It's all the little things that they put into the package. Well he's been out there long enough to pick up all those little things. And not only is he giving the hitter a different look by where he's playing but where he's moving as the pitch is on the way just trying to get that little bit of an advantage for himself. Strike three call. Lenny does not like it. Talks to Hirschbeck about it. I understand that Daryl Strawberry was thrown out of an exhibition game yesterday by Joe West. So you have to be careful even in the spring what you say. <laughs> That's four strikeouts for Cormier. John Vukovic in your picture. And here is Mickey Morandini. He was called out on strikes back in the first inning. It's Mickey's job here to see if he can't pick up Lenny. He was unable to get the run in. We remain scoreless in the third inning. Bouncing ball to the wizard. He scooped it on the heel of the glove and makes the play. So for the Phillies, no runs, one hit and one left. After three, it is nothing, nothing. Pardon me, uh, where are you going with all that Bud Light? Uh, the Lee family reunion. Then I'm here for the Lee family reunion. You're a member of the Lee family? Yes, I am. Right this way. You're a member of the Lee family reunion. 
Sure was your sure. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. When you come to a Pep Boy Super Center, you'll be amazed by its size. They've got over 24,000 items, all with brand names you know and trust. Many with lifetime warranties. Ray Bestas, Borg Warner, TRW, Gabriel, Purolator, CR, and Bendix. Everything you need to keep your car looking good and running smoothly. Day or night, even on Sunday, come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. The right car should be safe and dependable. The right car should have a V6 engine, front wheel drive, and a driver's side airbag. It should be comfortable, and it should have room for five adults, a theft deterrent system, and keyless entry. But most of all, the right car should be easy to get into. Lease a Maxima GXE with no down payment and $289 a month for 36 months. Saturday, April 16th, Phillies and the Reds at 7.05. Great Phillies baseball plus photo balls featuring various different Phillies players for all children 14 and under. It's a new and exciting keepsake for all the young fans. Compliments of Burger King. The number to call for your tickets, 463-1000, or you can stop by any one of the many local Ticketmaster outlets. Fourth inning coming up. The game's still nothing, nothing. Each team with two hits. Todd Zeal leads it off for St. Louis. And both these pitchers looking pretty good so far. Zeal grounded out to Stocker his first time up. Todd came on last year to have a tremendous second half of the year. A play for Batiste. Throws high and over the head of Duncan. Zeal goes to second base. Throwing error on Batiste, and the Cardinals have their leadoff man on second. Error all the way on Batiste. Routine one hop ground ball to come at third has plenty of time. Takes just a little bit too much of that time on the throw over the first base. And sometimes you have a tendency when you know that you have plenty of time to just kind of sail the ball over there. Just you know, not put a full throw on it. The arm doesn't quite come all the way through. It looked like that's what happened to Batty. He got underneath that ball and just sailed it over Dunk's head at first base. Now here's Witten. Got a single his first time up. He will not be bunting of course Teak, but I would imagine he will try to pull the ball. They're looking for a pitcher that can hit to the right side. Hopefully, you know, from his perspective, he'd like to hit it through the right side. But worst case scenario, if you can get it over there, even if you make an out, the runner moves to third base with one out. Juden got a good breaking ball in for a strike. Witten didn't want to swing at that one. Of course, you know, everybody in the ballpark knows that Witten wants to hit the ball to the right side, including Juden and Darren Dalton. So they're going to try to pitch in a way that he will either pull the ball foul if he gets out in front of it or try to keep him from hitting it to the right side and get a ground ball to the left side of the infield. He hits it a ton to left field. Interesting that that does not get the job done. You know, that's, that's a, he hit it hard. It had a chance for extra bases, but the net result is it's caught and the runner is still at second. Yeah, the net result is Jeff Juden got exactly what he wanted after throwing the breaking ball and showing him the off-speed pitch. Comes back with the fastball on the outside part of the plate. We'll see right here. Maybe we won't see. Oh, well, it was here and gone. No wonder he couldn't pull it. That was quick. That was quick. That's that's really but, quick. Uh, the end result is a line drive to left field, a hard hit ball, but yet one out and the runner still at second base, Todd Zeal. The hitter is Brian Jordan. Juden struck him out first time. Misses with a breaking ball inside. Go back to that for one second. The reason why it worked was not the fastball away, but rather the curveball before that made him conscious of the off-speed pitch and then with the good fastball able to throw the ball by him. Juden takes a long look at the runner. Here's a ball short hop by Morandini. The runner is going to make it to third but there are two outs. So Jordan is out on a nice play by Morandini. Zeal at third base and Geronimo Pena coming to the plate. And a good job by Morandini right here. Even though he might have a shot at third base at Zeal, goes to first base. It really doesn't matter with two outs whether the runner's on second or third because it's still going to take a base hit. Get the second out. Sure, you can score on a wild pitch, an infield hit, but chances, you know, the percentages are 
take the shore out, get to two outs with the man on third base. Juden now has a chance to work from the windup, which obviously is more comfortable to him. He walked Pena first time up. He starts him out here with a strike. It's his only walk of the afternoon. Breaking ball misses. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball hit to right field being charged by Longmire. He got it. Longmire saves a run. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. Your name is Claudia Doran. You live in Venice, California. Where are you from? It's not a trick question. Chicago. And your code name is Nina. Hello? Nina. One hour. There are three people sitting behind you on the balcony. I don't understand. I want you to put two bullets in the VIP. Once she took their deal, she passed the point of no return. How are you? Just blew up a hotel. How the hell do you think I am? You like living with a ghost. In a minute. You like that you made me into something different. Please, Bob. Let me go. They never thought she'd want to leave it. If you pull this job off for me, I'll see what I can do down. Bridget Farnborough. Point of no return. The gutsy, gritty, go for broke Philadelphia Phillies take on the always colorful Tommy Lasorda and the Los Angeles Dodgers Monday, April 18th at 7.35. Then again Tuesday, April 19th at 1.05 in the first of six business person specials. Come on, all you dudes and dudesses. Come back for more in 94. Order your tickets in advance now. Call 463-1000. That's 463-1000. The freshest potatoes. Pure filtered vegetable oil. Hers, it's the way they're made. Well, Tika and I want to alert you to some sports news shows that are coming up on Sports Channel. We're going to have the New Sport Press Box, New Sport Tonight, and New Sport Report Chicago Bureau. They're all half hour shows. Be sure and check your local listings to find out when they're on. We still have a nothing nothing ball game here from Jack Russell Stadium. And Mariano Duncan leads it off for the Phillies. It's been a pitcher's battle so far, and both of them have seen a runner at third base. And both runners have died there. Duncan grounded out to short first time around. Hard hit. Wizard can't get that one. If he did, he wasn't going to throw him out. Duncan gets a base hit, the Phillies' third of the afternoon. Mariano goes to the plate to hit and he gets a good first pitch fastball from Cormier. Wizard goes into the hole, as you said, even had he made that play, was not going to be able to make the throw to first base. But it's fun to watch him try. It is indeed. Beating Cavilia, he singled first time around. I guess I ought to be careful about saying that. I've, I've thought that a few times in the past and all of a sudden he's come up and made a play. Well, he is fun to watch though. I mean, I oh. think over the years I think our generation has been fortunate to watch what even a lot of old timers categorize as the best shortstop to play baseball and we saw a pretty good one for a long long time oh, yeah, I'll say. Larry Boa some pretty high standards to compare him to foul back Larry was as steady as any shortstop. I mean, Larry just simply got to the ball and threw him out. Now, he wasn't as acrobatic as the Wizard, but this guy just did not make errors. No, did not make physical errors or nor mental errors. And that's Always knew good. where to go with the ball, always knew what base, knew the situation of the game. You know, that's really what separates the good shortstops from the also rams. You know, that's what makes him a good coach, too, Teak, the fact that he can, without blinking an eyelash, tell you what the play should always be. And Cavilla hits it a ton to the gap in right center field. It's not going to be caught. And it's a two-run home run. 
Hank Gavilia with his fourth homer of spring training. And the Phillies jump out 2 nothing. Is that man strong or what? That pitch was actually a pretty good pitch by Cormier on the outside part of the plate, but Pena and Cavillia with that great upper body strength that he has just reaches out, puts the, you know, hits the ball out toward the end of the bat, and yet hit it to the deepest part of right center field. Darren wow. Dalton's at the plate. He takes a strike. I think he talks about it in the offseason. He does a lot of work with weights and, of course, you know, was talking about building his strength by taking a lot of batting practice early in the spring training. All pays off. He is tied for the team leadership in homers now with four. He and Longmire with that total, and he's only one RBI behind Tony now. 15 hey, to 14. Look at that shot. There's a whole lot of inky in that shirt. Yeah, really. <laughs> Foul right at the plate. One ball and two strikes on Darren. Still no outs here as the Phillies hit in the fourth. A little fluid after that trip around <laughs> the bases talking before the game about how hot it is out here. Well, he got got a little extra running in today, but uh, never mind that kind of running. It was worth it. Low, two balls and two strikes on Dalton. Breaking ball and it missed. Good eye by Darren to take that pitch. It's a full count on Dalton. Ball out on strikes. That's strikeout number five for Cormier, but he trails 2 0. Cormier again able to get back on that outside corner against the left handed hitters. Pappas sets the glove up. Cormier puts it right in there. Well, that's a tough pitch to make on somebody three and two. It sure is. You're supposed to have to give up a little bit of the strike zone when you get to three and two. He painted the outside corner. But he struck out first time around. Let's see what the wizard does with this. Smooth pickup and perfect throw. Batista's retired, two up and two down. Obviously, Ozzy does not have the range that he once had. He never did have a good arm. But by his positioning of the hitters, you know, he's able to basically come up with most balls. Here's Tony Longmire. Tony struck out first time around. <laughs> Tony probably doesn't have the arm to be a an everyday right fielder down the line, but Phillies are playing him there somewhat. Probably, if everybody's healthy, he'll certainly see more time in left field than he will in right field. But that's a big if, the way things have been going here lately. In case you missed the opening of our program, more problems today. An MRI coming up later this afternoon for pitcher Larry Anderson, who heard something pop in a knee yesterday. And a stiff shoulder for Dave Hollins, and he'll be out about three or four days. One and two on Longmire. Struck him out. That's strikeout number six for Cormier. But the Phillies get two on the homer by Incavilia. Two hits, nobody left. And lead after four, two nothing. How's it going, man? How's it going, man? Great. Game's almost on. Got any Bud Light? Hurry, I'm fresh out. Fresh out. Fresh out. Well, I'm out of here. Hide the Bud Light. Joe's coming over. Hide the Bud Light. Big Mouth. If you want great taste that won't fill you <laughs> up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Come on, where'd you hide the Bud Light? Ah, uh, it's in the garage. In the garage. In 1993, something special happened between a town and a team. 
The team fired the passions of a town. The town took the team to its heart, and hundreds of thousands rediscovered the joys of baseball. The most convenient, most hassle-free way to get more in 94 is with full or part season tickets. 11 different plans featuring the popular 16-game plan for just $192. Call 463-5000. Sunday, April 17th, the 135 game against the Cincinnati Reds is championship ring keychain day. A great gift to remember the spectacular 1993 season by. A free keychain with a replica of the 1993 championship ring on it. It's free for all children, 14 and under, compliments of Subway. Great baseball, great gifts, makes plans to come out. Call the Phillies at 463-1000 to order your tickets easily by phone or stop by one of the many local Ticketmaster outlets. We go to the fifth inning here at Jack Russell Stadium. Eric Pappas is the Cardinal leadoff hitter. It's 2 nothing Phillies. <laughs> Takes a strike. Rolled out to shortstop first time up. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, importance for Pappas this spring because he's going to be the everyday catcher at least for the first month or six weeks until Pagnazzi <laughs> is ready. It's a real bad break for Pagnazzi to injure the same knee that he that he had to rehabilitate last year. And just had surgery during the offseason to clean it out, you know, doing much. I think Pagnazzi is probably a lot in the class with Darren Dalton now, where that knee is going to need to be flushed and cleaned every year. After just getting off the surgery and getting, you know, just starting to get back in shape and starting to play again, and all of a sudden shifted on a ball and bingo, went again. So Pappas is the Cardinal catcher, at least uh, at the beginning of the season. Of course, there are knee surgeries and knee surgery. How about Mitch Williams gets knee surgery and is back on the field less than a week? I mean, that must obviously it wasn't a very serious one. But but even so, surgery is surgery if they open it, you know, if they go in there. Go in there and uh, with Mitch's knee, they went in and flushed it out. Three days later, he's back throwing batting practice. I think it was six days later, he's back on the mound pitching in the game. The medical field has improved immensely. And remember when, you know, players would have knee surgery, they'd be out for the year. I mean, it didn't matter what they were doing because you had to open up the knee and go in there. Now, with the, the scopes and everything, much simpler process. Juden walks the leadoff hitter Pappas. I'm sure he didn't want to do that. It's only his second walk of the afternoon, but we'll see what the Cardinals do about working out a run here. They will obviously try to bunt Cormier. Juden struck him out first time around. The Phillies will be looking for the bunt here. And then the top of the lineup. The Phillies had a runner at third base with less than two outs and could not get him home. Cardinals had a runner, a leadoff runner at second base with no outs and couldn't get him to third until there were two outs. Cormier punts it. It's a foul ball. Dalton was hoping it would stay fair. He was going to make the play to first or maybe even to second. I think Dalton was thinking about second base. Cormier, you know, this assignment a little tougher for Cormier because he has Pappas at first base, a catcher who doesn't run all that well. So, you know, if Dalton can get to the ball quickly right in front of the plate or... Baptiste card charging from third, Duncan from first, or Juden off the mound if it's bunted too hard. You know, they have a play at second base. So it's going to take a pretty good bunt by Cormier here to get the job done. You know, from a hitter's point of view, if you're up there trying to bunt, does it make that much difference what kind of a runner you've got at first? I mean, how do you go about your job differently depending on the runner? Almost well, definitely. You know, if you've got a guy on there that's a burner, well, then you're just thinking, you know, all I want to do is make sure I get the ball on the ground because they're, first of all, they're not going to think about trying to throw him out. And number two, it's going to be very difficult. When you got a guy that's slow, you're not only thinking about getting it down, as Cormier tried to do right there. Yeah, this was run and bunt here. But you're also, you know, trying to make sure that it's in that very small area. The area that you can put the ball in and be successful is much smaller. So you have to try to, you know, be really precise about what you're doing. You can't just get the ball on the mount or on the ground back toward the pitcher or right toward one of the fielders. You have to put it out there softly Cormier 0 for two attempts so far and this time to Joe Torrey to try to uh, enable the odds to be more in his favor he went ahead and started the runner Dale Murphy has been working with the outfielders in the Cardinal camp and had a nice visit with his ex teammates today well, Cormier finally gets it down and it turns out to be a good one because it bounced high in the air Juden makes the play to first or Morandini covers but that's a good sacrifice punt. Yeah, with two strikes, you're just trying to get the ball on the ground. Cormier fortunate that 
He bunted the ball right into the ground, and it, it bounced high enough in the air that by the time it came down, Juden did not have a chance at second base. So the Cardinals will try to get a run out of this. We go back to the top of the line. Let's talk about Murph a little bit more. Great to renew acquaintances with him. And, you know, it was a year ago this time that he was still wearing a Phillies uniform. Yes. Up until that fateful day in Oklahoma City. When he was dealt to the Colorado Rockies. And unfortunately, he retired from the Rockies before the Phillies ever met them during the regular season. We did, however, see Murph last summer because he still makes his home in Atlanta. And he came out to visit the Phillies a couple of times. Gilkey today has flied to center and grounded to short. I asked Murph about his knee. He says it's holding up real well. He's able to play some tennis, play some golf. Hit a ton to left field, fair or foul. Foul ball, and that's a break for the Phillies. That was going to be trouble. Not much room in the left field corner, Jack Russell Stadium. This ball just does get in that small, about three, four foot area between the foul line and the wall down there. And Cavilli goes into the corner, not able to chase it down. That's that same corner that jumped up and grabbed Tony Longmire. It sure did. That was on Monday. Longmire ran into the fence down there. I was thinking if Inky hits the fence, the fence might take more of a beating. <laughs> Nothing and two on Gilkey. That's a good pitch right there. That's a beautiful pitch. He missed with it, but that's good. Right where you want it. Down and away. Now, when pitchers are that close, Owen, too, they do you they do you some good. If you're throwing three feet outside, it does you absolutely no good. The one-two pitch. Dalton goes outside, and the pitch is outside and low, two and two. Jeff Juden trying to open some eyes here today, and he's done a good job. Two walks, two strikeouts for him. Gave up two hits, and the Phillies have given him a two-nothing lead. Breaking ball hit to right field Longmire in the right spot. He catches Pappas remains at second base. There are two outs. Jeff doing a nice job of pitching today with men on base. This inning his fault because of the walk last inning the two base leadoff or two base error by Kim Batista on leadoff hitter Todd Zeal. So has been under the gun a little bit and has responded very nicely. Ozzie Smith singled his last time up. The Wizard one for two. You know, we've been hearing Jeff Juden's name for a couple of years now, but when you check his record, you realize that his major league experience is really limited. He was brought up by the Astros at the tail end of 91 and got into four ball games. He did not appear in the majors in 92, and last year he was in just two games. So he's had a total of six games major league experience. But because he was a number one draft choice you heard about him you followed his career and you knew that for quite a while the Astros were very high on Jeff Juden. And not only because he was a number one draft choice but because he could put a little giddy up on that baseball too. Absolutely. And it was interesting to hear Artie Howe his ex skipper say today I think a change of scenes will help him. Yeah, sometimes, you know, when you're in an organization, you feel like the organization is either picking on you or things just haven't worked out, you know, to your expectation. Sometimes a little fresh scenery and a new look is good for you. Play at second base, Stockmeyer streaking in behind Pappas. Mentioned did before. I say Stockmeyer? Stockmeyer. <laughs> I think I did. I just really. <laughs> That's Kevin Stocker I'm talking about. The usual Philly shortstop. Yes. That makes it two and two on Smith. Interesting. The first two at bats, Smith both times went to left field on Juden, taking the fastball away and hitting hitting it out to the opposite side. Once the Incavillian in left, once through the left side. This time, getting more, many more pitches on the inside part of the plate. Comes in on him. Well, now there's a full count on Ozzy. Case of constant adjustments. Pitchers, hitters, hitters, pitchers. Jeffries on deck. Two nothing Phillies. We are in the fifth. 
Pappas drew a leadoff walk. As he sends a pop up, it's foul third base side. Batiste is over and it stays playable. The wind brought it back. Off the bat, that was out of play. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. No runs, no hits, and one man left on base. Middle of the fifth, two nothing Phillies. Now, John Hughes brings one of your all-time favorite cartoon characters to life. Smile. For a whole new generation to discover. Don't embarrass me. You'll love Mr. Wilson. That kidney's a menace. Mrs. Wilson. The Mitchells. Margaret. We could bury you alive. I could pound you up big. Joey. Switchblade Sam. And a menace named Dennis. Kids are kids. You have to play by their rules. You have to roll with the punch. You have to expect the unexpected. Dennis the Menace. That's me! A classic kid. A classic comedy. Retirement? I'm too young to be worried about retiring. I'm set. I've been socking away a little of my paycheck every month. The same company for almost 20 years. <laughs> They'll take care of me. You bet I got my nest egg covered. In these uncertain financial times, turn to Nationwide Financial Services for a wide range of investment alternatives, most of which are tax advantaged. Because someday soon, the quality of your life may depend on the quality of your investments. Phillies Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by the Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. Well, a good outing today for Jeff Juden. He's going to leave the ball game after working five scoreless innings during which he gave up just two hits. Wilbur Snap, the stadium organist, entertaining everyone as he always does here at Jack Russell Stadium. And that is uh, Mike Dunn. We talked about Dunn possibly getting into a ball game, and he will indeed. Dave Collins, we mentioned that Collins has a bad shoulder, but Collins is well enough to pinch it, and he's out to bat for Juden. Right after Stocker leads off the inning. Stocker has a double today, one for one. Cormier still hurling for St. Louis. Cormier with six strikeouts in four innings. Stocker with that hit probably has his average now up over the 200 mark. He was down in the 140s when the week began. but foul. One ball, two strikes down into the Cardinal bullpen. Phillies only had Stocker for half the year last year. Played great baseball in the first half of the year without him, but it would have been better had he been the shortstop then. And what a lift he gave him in the second half. Ground ball headed for the hole. The Wizard picks it up. Here's his throw. That's the Wizard. The quick release from the hole. Stocker is out. Shortstop love to do this to other shortstops too. Yeah, you know, they'd like to do it anytime, but when you can pick on your opposition and say, "Not, not today, son." Don't know if that would have been a hit you know, with a whole bunch of other shortstops, but uh, would have been a heck of a lot better chance of making getting the base hit out of that. Here is Dave Hollins pinch hitting batting at 304 no homers eight runs batted in for the Phillies regular third baseman who's not going to take the field for a couple of days because of a bum shoulder <laughs> takes a strike receiving treatment on that shoulder yeah tendonitis in the shoulder it bothers David when he throws the baseball so give him a couple of days rest a little medication a little treatment 
Not anticipating any problems. Doesn't bother Here's him at all. Swinging the bat, though. I guess. Picked up by Jordan on one hop. Hollins wants two out of it. And he dives in with a man-made double. That was a single off the bat. He made it two. Dave Hollins. That right there is Dave Hollins. Shoulder hurts a little bit. Don't matter. I'm going to play. Hits the ball. And watch this. Right off the bat, out of the box, he's gone. That's where that double was made. Those first three steps out of the box. He anticipated going to second or being in position to go to second. As soon as Brian Jordan was able to track it down, Hollins all the way in. Never hesitated one bit. Now the batter is Dykstra. Lenny has flied to left and struck out. Cardinals have a new left fielder, Gerald Young, a non-roster player, has taken over out there for Gilkey. Gerald Young, we saw him with the Houston Astros. See some hits start to roll off that bat. Cormier taking a little extra time. It's a tough day for a pitcher. You're going to get good and loose, but you're also going to get tired easily. Strike one one. Yeah, it's not only the heat; it's the combination of the heat and the humidity. Sapping the strength from your body. Cormier, not the biggest of men, 5'10, 185 pounds. Outside the Lenny, two balls and a strike. Dykstra came into the game with a 190 batting average for spring training, but as you said earlier, he's not worried about it. Nobody else seems to be either. One thing that uh, he has done the same this spring as he always does, and that is take pitches. You know, he has, I haven't seen him swing at bad pitches at all. Well, Lenny very seldom will go to the plate and give away in his bat. He goes up there with a plan and his. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you get a lopsided ball game or that, hitters will just go up and, you know, look for one pitch and try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Lenny does not give away those at bats. So he looks at those as at bats where he can, you know, find ways to get on base. He doesn't want to mess up his style. So he goes ahead and does the things that he normally does. Dykstra draws a base on balls, his fifth of spring training and the first issued by Cormier today. So the Phillies have two on with one out for Mickey Morandini. Tapas starting out toward the mound. Ozzie Smith had come in. First time in the ball game, the Phillies have had multiple runners. Well, very briefly in the fourth. <laughs> yeah, on the home run, right? As long as Inky went around the bases, that was <laughs> they had multiple runners in. I give up, Deke. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> there they are, first and second, one out. Phillies about hit the Cardinals five to two. How about we settle for multiple stationary runners? <laughs> well, we hope they're not stationary, right? Well, they are at least right now. That's true. Now Pappas is going to go out there. There's something that uh, that uh, Pappas and Cormier are not together on here. Cormier, normally a pretty quick worker, has really slowed the pace down here. Yeah, I was blaming him on the weather, but it might be something else. I had the conversation with Ozzy. Now Pappas going out just to check. If this keeps up, you'll see Joe Coleman out there before too long. Yeah. Saying, let me in on it. To the third, oh, scooped up by Zeal. He's got a shot at two. He gets two. How about that? Sharply hit, but a double play around the horn. No runs, one hit, nobody left. And the Phillies lead 2-0. Driver, do you have any Bud Light in your vehicle? Yes. And I am Mr. Gally Weekich. You mean Dr. Galakowicz? Yes, I am. This is so cool!
First time in a limo, doctor? In a limo this small. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You can't use a mobile phone to tell your boss you're running late. He said 2.45, right? To tell your client you're stuck in traffic. What, you know, where is he? Or tell your wife your car's broken down. Temperature dropping rapidly towards this evening. The showers... Unless... Hello? The call goes through. A mobile phone is only as good as the system it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. As winter winds down and thoughts turn to spring, it's time for you to see your Quality Plus Ford dealer. Now, during Ford Performance Month, save on over 2,000 probes in stock, including SEs and GTs. All probes now come with standard dual airbags. Now get low 3.9 financing on all probes, or lease this probe for just $239 per month for 24 months. Hurry, these are limited time offers. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer now during Ford Performance Month. Then you can wind up with one of America's favorite ways to wind down. Phillies start their season at Veterans Stadium Monday, April 11th, the 205 home opener against the Colorado Rockies. Series continues Wednesday and Thursday, both at 7:35. Then the Reds for the weekend: Friday, 7:35; Saturday, 7:05. Photo ball night Sunday, the 17th at 1:35. Keychain Championship Ring Day. Order your tickets easily by phone. Call the Phillies at 463-1000. So Mike Dunn gets a chance to pitch in an A game here in spring training. He's not on the Phillies roster. He's in the minor league camp. 31-year-old right-hander who's had a lot of arm problems. Mike Dunn has looked good so far this spring, so they're taking a look at him. One Dunn. thing that Jim Fergosi does a lot is bring the kids over from the minor league camp and give them an opportunity to play in the big leagues with the big league players, not only for their benefit and a little encouragement to kind of pump, up, pump them up a little bit, but also gives him an opportunity to see you now, he might have heard a report, hey, Dunn's throwing pretty good over here. Gives him an opportunity to see firsthand what Mike Dunn is really doing. Facing Greg Jeffries here. Jeffries has grounded to short and flied to left. Dunn is 31 years of age. Breaking ball, and he gets it in for a strike. That makes a rehabilitating pitcher feel good, doesn't it? Most definitely. Dunn has been in the big leagues with the Pirates and the White Sox. Fly ball, left field line. Incavilia coming hard. That's a fair ball. He couldn't get it. And winding up at second base is Jeffries on a fly ball double. A long run for Inky. Tried his best. Inky getting his work in today. Had a couple of long runs in the ball game already defensively. Here you see him makes a supreme effort, just not able to quite catch the ball. Well, you got to be concerned, you know, with all the injuries the Phillies have had when you see Inky rolling around on the ground like that and diving. You want to make sure you know, don't land up on that shoulder, don't twist a knee. Just barely inside the left field line. He looks to be fine. And Todd Zeal will hit now. Todd is 0 for 2. He grounded to short, reached on an error by Batiste. I have to send the ground crew out to check see how the turf is out there. Well, that could be in trouble. Curve ball for a strike. I have to replace a little sod. Zeal did his major damage last year in the second half of the year. Up through the middle, and how about these two hits? Cardinals are going to get a run. Jeffries coming to the plate. It's now a two to one ball game. And Mike Dunn has not pitched in very good luck. RBI single for Zeal, his 11th run batted into the spring. This ball caught out a little bit toward the end of the bat, but right off the side of the mound past Mike Dunn into center field. As you mentioned, Jeffries hit down the left field line, a little flare just inside the foul line. This one hit fairly hard, but still off the end of the bat, but in perfect spot. Mike Dunn falling off to the first base side. Kevin Stocker with no chance to catch the ball up the middle. So the Cardinals pick up a quick run. Still nobody out here. The bottom of, or the top of the sixth inning. Two to one ball game now as Witten bats. He has singled and lined the left. Didn't talk. We should too about that day that Witten had last year. It was September 7th. Cards were playing the Cincinnati Reds in a doubleheader, and all he did was homer four times and knock in a dozen runs. 
That's the day we wish we were to play three. Boy, that sound like he did, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sound like he played about a whole week. I just have a feeling this guy has got superstar written all over him. He's got all the tools. Hits for a good average, power, great throwing arm, good speed. And he flares one the opposite way. Incavilia plays it. Base hit. Witten gets a single. So the Cardinals greet Dunn with three consecutive hits. They came into the inning with just two for the ball game. Again, another pretty decent pitch by Dunn. Got Witten completely extended, but with that strength that we mentioned he had, just reaches out and slaps it into left field. Able to extend himself and get enough of the bat on the ball to lift it out over the infield. That gets Brian Jordan to the plate. Today, Jordan has struck out and grounded to second. Phillies need some outs for Mike Dunn. Let's take a second and go back to the job that Jeff Juden did this afternoon. Now, as you mentioned, five innings only gave up to two hits, no runs. But I think, you know, importantly, in the fourth and fifth innings, fourth inning, the leadoff error by Batista. Third put a man on second with nobody out. Pitching the dirt. In the fifth inning, he walks Pappas to lead off the inning. Cormier is able to bunt him to second, so a man on second with only one out, and yet in both situations able to very neatly pitch his way out of the inning. So not only did he pitch well over a five-inning period, but was able to pitch his way out of some very tight situations. Always a plus because heaven knows during the regular season you'll be in your share of tight situations. In the air to deep center, Dykstra gets back. He's going to have to watch it. It's gone. A three run home run for Jordan. And the Cardinals take a 4 2 lead. Fergosi is seeing about done here, and this is an unfortunate occurrence. Done with a fastball. Looks like it's about thigh high in the middle of the plate. Jordan with good extension. Hits the ball again, much like Incavilia, to the bigger part of the ballpark, left center field. Another strong young man. His fourth home run of spring training, and he now has 17 runs batted in to lead his club. He wants more playing time. Yeah, he didn't want that four-man rotation out there. Says, I want to be. Uh, how about put me out there every day and rotate the other three? <laughs> Pena has walked and flied to right field. The ball he hit to right field was a tremendous catch by Longmire coming straight on in. Here, Dunn jams him. Two balls and a strike. Just outside of all. In 1990, Dunn opened the season on the disabled list with San Diego, recovering from off-season arm surgery. Hit to left field, Incavilia getting over, and he puts that one away for an out. That's the first out of the inning. Pena flies to Incavilia. Happy birthday, Harry Callis, working in the radio booth with Rich Ashburn today, and it's Harry's birthday. Nice going, Rich. Survived another one. <laughs> he did, against <laughs> some heavy odds. <laughs> Pappas takes low and in, ball one. And uh, Cormier is out in the on-deck circle to pitch, or to bat, rather, so I guess he's going to continue pitching. Here's Cormier. Gonna face the Phillies in the bottom of the sixth. He now has the lead 4 2. I think I guess as a pitcher, first we're, we're not talking spring games now, but as a pitcher, you just have to forget about what the other situation is. Do your job. Let your teammates get some runs. I mean, you must have to isolate those thoughts in your mind. Yeah, you really almost have to put that part of the game out of your mind, you know, and 
just concentrate. You can't control if your offense is going to score runs for you or not, or if your defense is going to catch the ball or not. Well, the one thing you can control is what you're going to do out there on the mound. So you really have to kind of get in your own little world and just concentrate on doing your job to the best of your ability and try not to let all the other factors around you uh, affect it a whole lot. Now, later in a ball game, you're going to have to be aware of the score and you know what's going on because of situational pitching. But uh, you know that's really about the only time. I've done issues a walk, so the Cardinal inning continues, and now we know what Cormier will be up there to do. He'll be up there to sacrifice, which he did last inning. Struck out his first time up. Yes, the same man, same man on first base to move along. Eric Pappas. Yeah, well, we were talking about that earlier, and, and his bunt was good enough to get the catcher to second base. Low and in, ball one. Cardinals lead at 4 2. We are in the sixth. Could be that Dunn's going to pitch another inning. There's nobody up in the Phillies bullpen right now. Hey, pulls the bat back. Joe's going to give him a chance to swing the bat. That'd be a way to advance Pappas, wouldn't it? Bill Butcher Boy play. Brain trust. <laughs> Having a little quick meeting over there. Let's talk that one over again. <laughs> well, we've said it many times. You can take a different approach to things. Yeah. A in spring training and B when you have the lead. Yeah. Right. Bunt is back on and it's down and he does it again. The same kind of chop bunt. Dunn feels it and throws him out with Morandini covering. He's turned this bunt into the uh, dirt that just flies up in the air and hangs there for a while into an art form. The eighth Cardinal of the inning is going to come to the plate now. It's Gerald Young who took over for Gilkey in the top half of the inning as the left fielder. Young is a non roster player. Gerald hitting 265 in spring training, no homers, and one run batted in. This guy can really fly. We saw him uh, play a lot of center field for the Houston Astros a few years ago. In fact, he was supposed to win that job, but he just never produced offensively at all. Here's a base hit for him. Pappas coming around third. Here's Longmire's throw. Cut off. Play to second. Out at second base. The run counts. And the Cardinals have a five run inning. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. Five runs, five hits, nobody left. Cards lead 5 2. When he rips it to deep right field, back goes Quinn. It's out of here. The Phillies play the Colorado Rockies in the home opener Monday, April 11th at 2.05 when all fans receive a free schedule magnet. Then again Wednesday, April 13th and Thursday the 14th at 7.35. A few new faces join the same group of gutsy, gritty gamers who gave you so much excitement, so many thrills in 93. Come back for more in 94. Reserve your tickets in advance. Call 463-1000. 463-1000 now. After we gave the Nissan Maxima GXE V6 power, room for five, keyless entry, power door locks, a driver's side airbag, cruise control, and a four-speaker stereo, you wouldn't think there was anything else we could do to make it more comfortable. Well, think again. Lease a Maxima GXE with no down payment and $289 a month for 36 months. April 19th, 105, Phillies and the Dodgers and a business person special. First of six this year. Always great to see Tommy Lasorda and his L.A. Dodgers in town. They've got the rookie of the year this year, Raul Mondesi. We learned that today from Artie Howe. Here's the number for your tickets, 463-1000. This is changed for the Cardinals, not playing center field. Moving from left field to center. Last sports channel game field. we had against uh, the ball. Tony Longmore made a bad throw to home plate, allowing runners to move up. This time gets the cutoff down, 
Mariano Duncan able to make the cutoff and get the play at second base. That's the way the play is supposed to be executed. Get the ball in the air to the cutoff man, allow him to make a decision. There wasn't really a play at the plate on Pappas. He was in cleanly, but the Phillies able to get the third out at second base on Gerald Young. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's 5-2 St. Louis. Here's the man who made that cutoff play, Mariano Duncan. Dunk one for two today with a single. He was on base when Incavilla hit a home run. New center fielder now for the St. Louis Cardinals. And the only player to have played in every spring game for St. Louis, John Mabry. I guess uh, Joe Torrey says if you hit a home run, you can leave the game. Get the rest of the afternoon off. Brian exactly Jordan right. hit a home run. He's gone. He's gone. Foul out. One ball, two strikes on Duncan to be followed by Incavilla and Dalton. Been a busy spring for a dunk when he came to Clearwater. He had no idea he'd be playing some first base this year. But we always say, in the case of a guy like Duncan or any player who is a good player but doesn't really have a position, he'll get his time. Something will work. Oh, yeah. That's why those kind of guys are so valuable on a ball club. Duncan chops a foul. They can do the job of three or four different players, and, you know, by having a player like that around that has that ability then you also can take specialty players and plug them into different holes because you don't have to use up those roster spots of course dunk will probably see the majority of his time over the course of the season at second base but still allows Jim for to make some moves and uh, cover up for some other players if there are some injuries down the line Duncan had 496 at bats for the Phillies last year 574 the year before Here's a ball. Hit a ton to left center field. Watch it. Home run for Mariano Duncan. His second in spring training. And it's now a 5-2 Cardinal lead. We talk about it so often, you know, we, and we talk about Duncan his versatility and be able to move around. Well, the one thing that is never affected by the fact that he plays so many different positions is his ability to swing the baseball bat. Cormier gets this fastball again. We talked about it up in the strike zone. Dunk likes the high fastball. He likes the left-handed pitchers, and he liked that one right off the base of the scoreboard and out of here. 5-3 St. Louis is the score. Here's Incavilla. He rode one out of here his last time up. Inky two for two today. And leads the club with 21 hits. Strike two call. Nothing in two on Incavilla. Oh, high one and two on Pete. Dalton to follow and then Kim Batiste. Got a football player, or at least we had one playing in this ball game, Brian Jordan. But Inky looks more like a football player <laughs> than he does, doesn't he? I guess he'd be an offensive lineman. Inky looks more like a football player than a lot of football players look. Oh. But the Phillies are sure glad he's a baseball player. And they're also glad that he's on their side. He was a guy that bounced around for a couple of years. You know, one year with Detroit, one year with Houston. Third strike. That's the seventh strikeout for Cormier. First out of the sixth inning. Here's Dalton. Darren has fouled out to first and struck out. Cormier had been working most of the hitters away this time with two strikes able to come on the inside corner. Now, remember, we talked about him being tough on left handers because he can paint the outside corner on them. That is exactly the same pitch, but obviously to the opposite hitter. He made a beauty. Three of his seven strikeouts have been called third strikes. It's high, two balls and no strikes on Dalton. Darren no hits today. 
but coming into the game with a 3.53 spring average and staying fresh by not going behind the plate until St. Patrick's Day. That seems to be the magic day. Foul. Two and one. Three balls, one strike. The only inning in which Cormier retired the Phillies in order was the first. I think this will probably be his last inning. given the number of pitches that he has made and the type of day that it is and the fact that they listed uh, three other pitchers on their sheet today Vincente Palacios another longtime pirate trying to make this club as a non roster player is expected to be one Steve Dixon another and Mike Perez the third pitcher listed ball four the second walk given up by Cormier Kim Batiste now will bat with one on and one out. Phillies trailing 5-3. We can't see into the Cardinal bullpen, so we don't know whether anybody's warming up or not, but you'd have to think that there probably is. And well, you look at the sheet, and Cormier has gone 3-3, three, 4-5, three, 6. He went six innings on Monday against the Cincinnati Reds, so you know, a possibility that he may go yet one more inning and just continue to tack on innings, but uh, as you mentioned, very hot and very muggy today. Depends on what they are really concerned about working on today. If you want to work on stamina, then okay, you go yeah. back out when you're a little tired and pitch that seventh inning. Or if you feel like you know he's made made the progress that you want him to make today, then you might bail out after six. Big Thanks. swing by Batiste. Incidentally, speaking of the weather, TK, this is not typical of weather down here. You usually get a day or two like this, but this has been going on now for a week or ten days. Is this good or bad? I think it's good because you can get your work in. Um, you know, the worst thing in the world is cool damp weather during spring training because at least the players can get loose they can do what they want to do now you'll have to make an adjustment when you go back up north all pulled foul down the stands on the left field side but yeah you, know, you have to make an adjustment to the cooler weather when you go up north but for getting in shape and getting the heart rate up and doing all the things that you want to do to be in shape uh, much easier to do during warm weather like this and also you know We've had very, very little rain this spring. And, you know, rain causes days off and messes up the whole schedule of, you know, you want to do this, this day, and this, that day, and you got to start compressing that. So I think good weather is a definite benefit to all clubs in spring training. One ball and two strikes. Hard hit. Wizard scoops it up, shovels to second, still gets the double play. Phillies pick up a run on the homer by Duncan. Nobody left on base. And now as we go to the seventh, it's five to three Cardinals. Ball fans 14 and under receive a free photo ball baseball featuring different National League champion Philly players. Compliments of Burger King. When the Phillies rip roar against the Cincinnati Reds. Saturday, April 16th, 705. For tickets, call 463-1000. You can't use a mobile phone to say... Okay, we're ready to sign a contract. You can't use a mobile phone to whisper... Daddy misses you too, sweetheart. A mobile phone will not let you send... Here comes a fax. And it will not let you hear... The meeting's been changed. Unless... Hello? The call goes through. A mobile phone is only as good as the system it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. There's a new kind of energy around here. An energy company that's doing everything it can to help protect your air and your rivers. In fact, it's one of the few in the country that already exceeds those tough new clean air standards and won't have to spend a lot of money on new equipment to help preserve your environment. They planned ahead. There's a new energy company around here and a new name. Pico Energy, focusing our energies on you.
Want a keychain and a replica of the Phillies National League Championship ring? If you're 14 and under, you can get one free thanks to Subway. When the Phillies ring it in the red, Sunday, April 17th at 135. Free keychain and ring. Call 463-1000. April right around the corner, and here are the games you can watch on Sports Channel in April. A week from today, April 2nd, Baltimore at 1.35 in the afternoon, preseason game, and then Colorado on April 6th. Again, the Rockies on the 13th, and the Dodgers on the 19th. All regular season games this year will be preceded by a half-hour pregame show starring Kent DeCulver. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> Changes for the Phillies, a new battery. Mike Lieberthal will take over behind the plate. And pitching to him will be Bobby Munoz. They will flip in the batting order. There's the hard throwing right hander for the Phillies who can be used as both a starter and a relief pitcher. 1 0 in spring training in six games. This being his sixth, he's a 3.94 earned run average. Cardinals lead at 5 3. Ozzie sends a ground ball out toward Morandini. Mickey makes the play. One pitch and one out. Now for the Cardinals, Greg Jeffries. Interesting with Bobby Munoz, you know, we've been talking in the past about him being a possibility for that fifth starter role, but, you know, with the injury to Larry Anderson now and the possibility that he may be down for a while, Munoz could very well become a much more important member of the Philly bullpen than had originally been planned. You know, we talk about, you know, when Mulholland left, everybody moved up a notch in the starting rotation. Well, also, that's going to happen in the bullpen now if Anderson's down for any considerable amount of time. Everybody else, including Munoz, is going to have to move up a notch, and that might put him in that uh, that setup role. We mentioned that Jim Fergosi feels as though the players almost make the decision for him, but that doesn't stop you from having a rooting interest. And I think Jim's rooting interest. There's a breaking ball, and it just missed. He first pick was ready to call a strike. He thought about it. He did indeed. But I think if if the order followed what Jim would like, Tyler Green probably would be the fifth starter. And Munoz would be in the bullpen. Incavillas there. Nice casual catch by Inky. Two outs. I agree with you. I think the skipper, you know, and it would work that way because Tyler Green is most comfortable as a starter, has not had a whole lot of success as a reliever. Bobby Munoz has had success as a reliever. And you like to slot guys, if at all possible, where they're most comfortable. Bases empty, two outs. Here's Todd Zeal. Zeal is one for three today. It was an RBI single. He also reached on an air and he grounded the short. This guy's become a pretty good run producer. They gave him a wake up call two years ago by farming him out to Louisville. And uh, he responded. Ball hit to Longmire, makes the play. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. Cardinals go in order. It's stretch time. Cards lead 5-3. When he rips it to deep right field, back goes Quinn. It's out of here. Home run, Lenny Dykstra. Deep to left center field. Way back. This ball is a grand slam. Home run, Darren Dalton. Deep to left field. Aaron Davis going back. Still going back. He can't. I'll hire him to mow the lawn and paint the garage. No, the garage. I'm dreaming big with Super 7. I'll buy a car. No, cars. Meet exotic people. Not him. Her. I'll be in the money. Moolah. Saturday. Super 7. If I can dream it, I can win it. The right car should be safe and dependable. The right car should have a V6 engine, front-wheel drive, and a driver's side airbag. It should be comfortable, and it should have room for five adults, a theft deterrent system, and keyless entry. But most of all, the right car should be easy to get into. Lease a Maxima GXE with no down payment and $289 a month for 36 months. Hi. I'm Dick Vermeil with a Blue Cross Blue Shield health tip. 
True or false? Only women can develop breast cancer. False. Although breast cancer is much more common in women, men should also examine their breasts for lumps. If you notice a lump, contact your doctor immediately. Back here at uh, Jack Russell Stadium, we have some changes for the Cardinals. Gerald Perry moves in to play at first base for St. Louis. The new shortstop is going to be Trip Cromer. Third baseman is Scott Coolball. And the new pitcher is Vincente Palacios. Palacios has been around a little bit. And give you his spring record here in just a moment. This spring he's been in six ball games. No wins or losses. He does have two saves and a very fine 2.38 earned run average. So they have to be pleased with what they've seen so far from Palacios. Well, Palacios getting a serious audition by the Cardinals. Cardinals lead at five to three. Longmire, who has struck out twice, takes a strike. This being his seventh ball game, only Mike Perez, who we will probably see later, has been in more ball games. He's been in seven already, so today will probably be his eighth. So Palacios getting a good long look see by Joe Torre this spring. No balls and two strikes on Tony. Five doubles to lead the Phillies in spring training. One and two. <coughs> struck him out for the third time. Well, Palacios didn't, but Longmire has struck out for the third time, and that's eight Phillies who have fanned in this game today. Short ball, split finger, whatever we want to call it, down low in the strike zone as Tony makes the approach at it, sinks down below the strike zone, not able to get a hold of it. Palacios throws a lot of the splitters. Here's Stocker. Kevin today has doubled and grounded to short. Batting in the nine spot for the Phillies is their catcher, Mike Lieberthal. Two and nothing. You know, Andy, I thought this past week, past Wednesday, when Jim Fergosi gave the entire ball club a day off, a very interesting move on his part. A lot of times during spring training, you will have a day off during spring training where you don't have a game, but you know, a pitcher will be throwing in the game over at the complex, or there'll be a workout during the day or whatever. Gave the entire ball club a day off, which I think serves two purposes number one gives everybody a breather spring training gets a little tedious as you go along to this point point. and number two it puts a defined spot in spring training and it's almost like you're saying to the players okay take the day off today and when you come back which was this past Thursday it's time to kick it in and start getting into our season in season mode hit to left field Mabry is there Stocker's bid for a hit denied by Mabry and the reason you want to do that is is you know, normally you will tell the players, okay, the last 10 days we weren't really kick it in and play the way we've been playing, but that doesn't always settle into the players because, you know, well, just yesterday we were cruising and today we're, we're going a little harder. So putting that defined day off in there uh, really makes the point to the players, and I think a good move by Fergosi. Lieberthal having a fine spring, batting 324. Pop foul out of play. One homer, four RBIs for. A number one draft choice a few years ago and a fellow who certainly figures in the Phillies catching plans in the future years. Phillies want him to catch at least 130 games at Triple A this year. Strike nothing in two on Mike. Maybe with all talking about how much more relaxed he feels this spring than last year when he was up for the first time and kind of feeling his way along. I guess a, a major league training camp can be a little intimidating for a first time player. Well, especially when you know, you spent your entire life really not only just the time you've been playing pro ball but thinking about being in the big leagues thinking about being with major league players all of a sudden you're there and you kind of you walk into the clubhouse that first time and you're a little bit in awe. Do I really belong here? Am I really one of them? I think uh, Mike came in this spring with a much more relaxed attitude much more familiar with the situation. Gets jammed, but still gets pretty good wood on it, fouling it down into the Phillies bullpen. 
One and two on Mike Lieberthal. Palacios wants a different baseball. Dow Maxwell is the Cardinal general manager. He's the guy that invites a guy like Palacios to spring training. Foul out of play. Palacios, non-roster as we mentioned, played in the Mexican League last year. He's 30 years of age. Breaking ball in the dirt, it's two and two. Palacios is from Mexico. He has two full years of Major League service. He runs a full count here on Lieberthal. Palacios now makes his home in California. Three two pitch. Pop up. Cromer the shortstop's going to play it. And down go the Phillies here in the seventh inning. So we go to the eighth with the Cardinals leading 5 3. Without you, they'd never make it down this mountain. don't show much appreciation but a job well done still has its rewards Head for the mountains of the Phillies try to make the Reds run up a white surrender flag Friday, April 15th at 7.35. And again Saturday at 7.05, when fans 14 and under receive a free photo ball baseball featuring different National League champion Phillies players. And Sunday, April 17th at 1.35, when kids 14 and under receive a free keychain with a replica of the Phillies National League championship ring. Reserve your tickets in advance. Call 463-1000 now. Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by Bell Atlantic Mobile. A mobile phone is only as good as the system it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. We go to the eighth inning with the Cardinals leading five to three. Mark Whitten is going to lead it off. High Philly from all the folks down here in Clearwater. Whitten today has had a good ball game. He's two out of three, a pair of singles. He scored one run, stole one base. It'll be Witten, Mabry, and Pena to hit for the Cardinals here in the eighth inning. They lead 5-3. Second inning of work for Bobby Munoz. Munoz acquired from the Yankees as the centerpiece of the Terry Mulholland deal. But he's also got Ryan Karp and uh, second baseman Kevin Jordan out of that deal. One ball, one strike. With the exception of the five-run sixth inning by the Cardinals today, Philly pitchers have pretty much been in charge of what's been going on out there. And of course, that inning came against Mike Dunn over from the minor league camp. So Jim Fergosi has to be pleased with the way his pitchers have been working. You know, we talked about that day off and kind of setting the tone. This is the time to kind of kick it in. Well, it looks like at least to this point today, the Philly pitchers have done that. Yeah, the guys that you're counting on, Juden and so far Munoz, have done a terrific job here today. We may yet see, uh, see uh, uh, Doug Jones in this ball game. And Doug had uh, some problems in the early part of spring, but he's come on to have some real good outings lately. 
Slow, slower, and slower, and slapped into right field by Witten, who has his third hit of the afternoon. So here's John Mabry getting his first at bat of the ball game. As we mentioned, he's the only Cardinal to appear in all 22 ball games. They're going to send a pinch runner in here. Well, first we'll look at this pitch to Witten again, off balance, but. As was the case the last time, strong enough to be able to get the ball and drive it through the right side. Mickey makes a diving attempt at second base, just not able to come up with it. So Witten two at bats in a row, showing off his strength. That is Witten out there as the runner, and big fastball, big swing by Mabry, no contact. Mabry hitting 321 here in spring training, no homers, and eight runs batted in. Into the air to left field. Here's Incavilla. Reaches down. Incavilla makes the play on Mabry. That's the first out of the inning. Witten remains at first. Inky with his second rather casual second catch on those little yeah. loopers in left yeah. field. Coming in, just nonchalantly throws the glove down, makes the play. No problem. I got it. That's just the way Barry Bonds would do it out there in left, isn't it? Geronimo Pena, he has walked and twice flied out. You're not going to respond to my Barry Bonds line? Now, how would Barry Bonds have played that ball, T? Well, due to the little difference in speed of the outfielders, he might have been standing there waiting for it. Oh, I see. Okay. Just high, huh? High chop. That's going to be trouble. Off the glove of Stocker. Allowing the base runner to go to third base. And the other runner is undecided, but he stays at first. Pena was halfway between first and second waiting. That'll be a base hit, and the Cardinals have first and third with one out. Probably would have been better had Stocker not gotten any leather on that ball. And the ball hit into the hole. Kevin goes over and tries to make a play on it. Deflects the ball away from Incavilia in left field. Now, Inky has to chase it down. By the time he gets to it, he makes the throw to third base. A little bit high to Batiste at third base. But watch Bobby Munoz. Right where you should be. Backing up the play. Catches and immediately turns to check to see where Mabry is at first base. Good alert play by Munoz. The catcher Pappas is batting now. He's 0 for 1 with two walks. Gerald Perry hitting out of the nine spot is on deck. Now you think of pitchers and their job is to throw the baseball and that's their primary job. But once the ball is hit there's always a responsibility to go somewhere and do something. Bobby Munoz doing a nice job of getting over to back up the throw to the third base. Had he not been there. Even if Lieberthal was able to come over and make the play for sure Mabry would have moved up to second base so the double play still in order. It's a call and strike. Well he's trailing at 5 3 would like to hold the Cardinals off the board here and we'll see whether Munoz is able to do that. He's got a one ball one strike count on the hitter. Nice, strike. nice fastball there. Hard and on the inside part of the plate. I'll tell you one thing, he's got a tough hitter to face next. That Gerald Perry tied a Cardinal Club record last year with 24 pinch hits. A little business to take care of first before we get to Mr. Perry. Runner goes from first. No throw from Lieberthal. Stolen base for Pena. Running Redbirds, their second stolen base of the ball game. Had another runner thrown out on the bases. Pena with a good jump. Saw him take a little look back just to make sure the ball wasn't put in play. And now the Phillies bring the infield in. Two two pitch. Breaking ball in the dirt. Nice stop by Lieberthal and a full count on the hitter Pappas. Munoz has been in trouble since giving up the leadoff single to Witten. And a glimpse of Perry waiting his turn. Chopped on the right side. It's a foul ball. 
That play was called by the home plate umpire Hirschbeck. There is no umpire at first as of the moment. We're working with three umpires as we normally do in spring training. And Ripley had gone over towards second. Three man crew, a little different setup that we see down here during spring training. Of course, during the regular season, always four umpires. Generally in spring training, the umpires on the base paths change about halfway through the ball game, and they've done that again today. Frank Pulley was on the other side to start. Foul away, causing Munoz to have to make a lot of pitches here. Bobby wants a different baseball. Munoz, 26 years of age. From Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico, 6'7, 237 pounds. Another one of those small guys. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said the Phillies basketball team next winter is going to be undefeated. Hard hit and through on the right side. One run scores. Other runner being sent. Pena heading for the plate. Well bobbled a bit, and the Cardinals pick up two. It's seven to three St. Louis as Pappas comes through. Pappas hitting 130 at game time has come through with a two RBI single. Well, Bobby had got to two strikes and he tried to put a couple breaking balls and put Pappas away with a couple breaking balls, not able to do so. So had to throw the fastball away. Pappas slams it through the right side. Tony thought he might have a chance for just a second, but uh, once he bobbled the ball, no chance, just returned the ball to the infield. There's Gerald Perry picking right up where he left off last year with a 357 average, a topper to the mound. Munoz throws it over the head of Duncan. Pappas makes it to third base. Perry makes it to first base on what should have, or to second base on what should have been an out. It'll be an error on Munoz. Well, it happened before to Kim Batiste. The hard one hopper to third base had plenty of time to throw the ball to first base. Now Munoz has plenty of time at first base, just makes the lob throw. Does not get enough on the ball, able to get it down. Ball was high, Dunk able to get the very tip of his glove on it, but you know, that's a routine play right there. Munoz should just be able to catch that ball and make a good firm throw to first base. So for the second time today, the Phillies nonchalant a little bit on the throws and it cost them both times. Gerald Young the batter the infield remains in tight there's only one out in the inning Munoz gets a strike Young has batted just once today's RBI single to right field that was the play that ended the sixth inning he tried to stretch it into a double and was thrown out Young is the Cardinals kind of player has great speed he could really patrol center field as a backup in St. Louis but as we say he's non roster and I don't know what his chances are. As we talked earlier, the, the Cardinal outfield full of talent. Always with the infield in again. Young is backed off. It's a two ball, one strike count. on the right side Duncan's got this a play at the plate got Pappas hung up he is tagged out the other runners move along so we still have second and third now there are two outs and the Phillies prevent the run Young safe at second on a fielder's choice good play by Duncan here goes through the hole comes up with the ball immediately doesn't even think about it comes home with the throw to Lieberthal First thing you do, move the guy back to the base that he came from, get him close, get rid of the baseball. Nice job. Now the hitter is Trip Cromer batting for the first time. He's hitting at 353, no homers, four RBIs for the Cardinal shortstop of the moment. Sends a loud foul off the first base side. 
Cromer last year played most of the year at Louisville. He played 85 games there, batting 285, or excuse me, 275 for the Louisville Cardinals. 11 home runs, 33 runs batted. And he got a cup of coffee with the Cardinals at the end of the year, getting into 10 ball games. Down the right field line. Foul ball. One and two on Trip Cromer. Cardinals have runners at second and third. It's Perry on third and Young at second. Munoz pitching in trouble most of the inning, and his error has put him in jeopardy, but the error has not figured in any scoring thus far. Cardinals lead 7-3. Strikes to end the inning. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. Two runs, three hits, an error, and two left. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 7 3, St. Louis. That you seemed really smart. He also said he thought you were really beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, I read black authors, you know. Will Chamberlain book changed my life. Yo, it's a white man at the door. <laughs> Bye. I'll tell her be home by midnight. You have her back here by midnight. Yeah. You gotta give me your word on something. Keep your head. <laughs> Nothing crazy. It's got to be by the book. No word on something else. I'm gonna put him in a box. By the book. Wesley Snipes. Dennis Hopper. You know why your quality plus truck authority? The Ford F-150 is again the number one truck in America for 17 years straight. Of all full-size pickups built over the past 16 years, there are more Fords still on the road. And they're backed by 24-hour roadside service. Plus, the big Ford has split bench seating, a strong bolted frame, more horsepower than Dodge, more torque than Chevy. The Ford F-150, now with $1,200 in savings. That's why your Quality Plus Ford dealer is the truck authority. It's the first business person special of the season. Compliments of Mellon PSFS. Tuesday, April 19th at 105, when the Phillies demolish, demoralize, and dismantle the Dodgers. Midweek, midday, April fun of the sun. Call 463-1000. The easiest, most hassle-free, fun way to see the Phillies in 94 is with Phillies season tickets. Don't miss the boat this year. Get on board now. There are many different types of plans to choose from, including the very popular 16-game plan for only $192. All season tickets come with special extra benefits, including gifts, charge phone privileges, and postseason ticket options. For information, call now, 463-5000. New battery for the Cardinals. Terry McGriff takes over behind the plate. And on the hill is a young left-hander, Steve Dixon, who had 20 saves at Louisville last year. And he's going to work out of the stretch, even though there are no runners. The Cardinals lead it 7-3. to three. Dykstra going to be tough to hang in on this guy. Dykstra today, 0 for 2 plus a walk. Lenny's saying, here I am in the eighth inning of a spring game, and i got to face a left-hander I don't know anything about. <laughs> Dixon was born in Cincinnati, lives in Louisville. As we say, he had a good year for Louisville. And here is a pop-up in the infield right side. Pena makes the play. One down on the eighth. Interesting. Dixon got the mannerisms of a couple left-handed relievers. Number one, when he stands in that stretch, he kind of got that chin tucked down a la Mitch Williams. Got that kind of look. And if you watch his mannerisms after he throws the ball, Got a little bit of the mad Hungarian Al Robowski in him. He charges the catcher and comes and snaps that ball back. So, got a reliever's look. That uh, mad Hungarian paid us a visit in our very own booth here today. He's a Cardinal telecaster. And uh, he's visiting the ballpark today, though not working. A little bit of the Mitch zone. Now, watch the charge. Yep, soften, go and, go and get that ball back. 
but will he go behind the mound and psych himself up for the next hitter? I hope not. <laughs> Robowski was among those who participated in a, uh, or is going to participate tonight in an old timers game down in St. Petersburg, a legends game, right, Tick? Yes. I guess not old timers games anymore. They're legends. I games. guess that's where you're heading right after the contest. Uh, right? No, I'm heading to the airport actually. <laughs> Hard hit, but right at Cromer. Morandini lines to trip the shortstop. Two outs. Mariano Duncan will bat. Good day for Dunk. Two out of three, including a home run he scored twice. Phillies are down, though, seven to three here in the eighth. Mariano just feasts on left handers. Like I said. <laughs> For the second time today, right on cue. Doesn't even wait around, just sees the first pitch from Dixon. Fastball. Looks good to me. Whacked. And that all ever present Here's smile. Here's Pete and Cavilla. He's two out of three today, single and two run homer. Pete struck out last time up there. Phillies are trailing seven to three in the eighth. Ricky Jordan comes out as a pinch hitter for Munoz. <laughs> Dixon gets it by him and then comes charging on in after the ball like Teak said I, I don't know after you get a, a big swing like that whether you want to be that close to the hitter <laughs> especially when the hitter is this guy. Foul. Perry giving chase. McGriff giving chase. It was playable. Jim Fergosi was the closest one to it. <laughs> Former Gold Glove shortstop should have caught that ball. Fergosi should have made the play. Why is a former Gold Glove shortstop? A lot of scattering going on over by the bench. Oh, yeah. Coaching staff. Keith Cliff Slocum warming for the Phillies. I mentioned that Jordan's out to pinch hit. Side, one ball and two strikes. Oh, a ball of foul. Just beyond the Cardinal dugout, third base side, really ripped hard by Inky. One and two. Phillies have been out hit this afternoon, 10 7 by the St. Louis Cardinals. Last year the Phillies won the season competition with the Cardinals eight to five got him on a changeup and the inning is over no runs one hit and one left and after eight seven three St. Louis. Most luxury cars are assembled with spot welds but for the J30 Infinity adopted a process called weld bonding that bonds entire seams over time. Flex and stress can weaken spot welds, but when the entire seam is sealed, there are no weak points, which means a stronger, safer body that lasts longer. Visit your Infinity showroom. Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. Sure, you've got a car. Got a dog. Even got some fun-loving friends. But have you got what it takes to be a mountain man? All it really takes are the two cool beers of the mountain man. Smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. So, be a mountain man. All you gotta do is head for the mountains. Most luxury cars are assembled with spot welds. But for the J30, Infinity adopted a process called weld bonding that bonds entire seams. Over time, flex and stress can weaken spot welds, but when the entire seam is sealed, there are no weak points, which means a stronger, safer body that lasts longer. Visit your Infinity showroom. 
Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. Flyers on prison this week. Sunday they'll play at Anaheim, 7 o'clock. Tuesday against the Rangers, 7.30. And Thursday versus Calgary, also at 7.30. Flyers on prison this week. Cardinals are sending a pinch hitter up. Tom Marsh takes over in center field for the Phillies now. And Stan Royer is pinch hitting for St. Louis. Royer's a guy who has posted great minor league numbers for a number of years, and about time he makes the big league ball club. Morandini throws him out. One down here in the top of the ninth. Scott Coolball will hit for the first time. Coolball hitting at 333 this spring. No homers, no RBIs. Bobby Munoz still on the hill for the Phillies. The Phillies had Jordan out in the on deck circle, but he never got a chance to bat. Longmire, right field, makes the play. Coolball retired. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Mark Witten has gone all the way today. Witten has had three hits in the ball game, three out of four, two runs scored, stolen base. And Jim Fergosi, I think, you know, looking at Bobby Munoz this inning, had a little bit of a tough time in the eighth inning. Things didn't go his way, made an error himself, which can be something that will rattle a pitcher. You know, might have been happy to see the inning end before the pincher got up where you can see send Munoz back out and just see how he reacts to that inning. Can he bounce back? So far, so good. Witten takes high a ball. I think uh, probably in this game, had the Phillies had the lead, we would be seeing Doug Jones pitching now. But that's why he had uh, Slocum up last inning. Hard hit, but right to Morandini. Mickey will make the play, and it's a 1 2 3 inning. You're watching Phillies baseball on Sports Channel. We move to the bottom half of the ninth inning at 7 3 St. Louis. Your name is Claudia Dorn. You live in Venice, California. Where are you from? It's not a trick question. Chicago. And your code name is Nina. Hello? Nina. One hour. There are three people sitting behind you on the balcony. I don't understand. I want you to put two bullets in the VIP. Once she took their deal, she passed the point of no return. How are you? Just blew up a hotel. How the hell do you think I am? You like living with a ghost. In a minute. You like that you made me into something different. Please, Bob. Let me go. They never thought she'd want to leave it. If you pull this job off for me, I'll see what I can do down. Bridget Fonda. Point of no return. Cars should be safe and dependable. The right car should have a V6 engine. Front wheel drive and a driver's side airbag. It should be comfortable, and it should have room for five adults, a theft deterrent system, and keyless entry. But most of all, the right car should be easy to get into. Lease a Maxima GXE with no down payment and $289 a month for 36 months. Sports Channel Philadelphia and Prism are proud to sponsor the Leukemia Society of America's annual Dress Down Day. We're inviting area companies to go casual to mark the beginning of the baseball season. Participating companies will receive commemorative buttons signed by the Phillies' Dave Hollins. For more information, call the Leukemia Society of America at 609-931-8500. This is Mike Perez taking over here in the ninth inning. The Cardinals have given him a 7-3 lead, and Perez has decided that he does want to be a closer. Originally, he had said that he didn't want any parts of that job, but uh, he's uh, come around to the correct way of thinking. <laughs> think. Yeah, really. Must have had a conversation with his agent. Anybody says they don't want to be the closer, if you're a relief pitcher, uh, needs to be examined. Bill Thompson is pinch hitting for Munoz. Bill's having a pretty good spring. The ex-Cardinal Thompson hitting at 293 with a homer and two runs batted in.
Perez, a workhorse of a pitcher for in 92 for the Cardinals, pitched in 77 ball games last year, pitched in 65 ball games, and even spent a little bit of time in Arkansas. So, uh, you know, a guy that can take the ball and go out there and pitch for you on a day in, day out basis and give you a lot of appearances and a lot of innings. Tries to get ground balls. Not a strikeout pitcher necessarily. Right out, no its legs. Two and two. Batiste and Longmire all sort of out here in the ninth. The Phillies trailing seven to three. Lost their only other game to the Cardinals this spring. Have the Cardinals once more. That's this coming Thursday right here in Clearwater. Final game in Florida. Strike three called. Well, I just called him a non strikeout pitcher, and look what he does. That, right by the way, he made you look bad. Yep. That's the 10th. Well, this is a pretty good out. combination of pitches. Threw one right in Milty's knees and then paints the outside <laughs> corner. Uh, talk about pushing a guy off the plate and then going away again with power. That's exactly what Perez did. Joe Torre, a contented man at this moment. Kim Batiste is at the plate now. Kim 0 for 3 this afternoon has struck out twice, grounded out, one of them a double play. There's that ground ball that he gets. Smothered at third by Cool Ball, but makes no play. It'll be an infield single for Kim Batiste. Scott Coolball makes a diving attempt at third base, ranges into the hole, able to knock the ball down. But you know that play right there, when you make that, you have to be able to come up with the ball cleanly and get back to your feet immediately to have any chance at all to get Batiste at first base. Good effort by Coolball, but not quite able to come up with it. Now, Batty just got off the of Schneid. Let's see if Longmire can. It's been a long day for him. Struck out all three times. He won't strike out here. Back and caught by Mabry, and that's the second out of the inning. The hitter for the Phillies is Stocker. Sam Mabry back to the warning track in left center field. Now normally after you've struck out the first three times up, you're just trying to get the bat on the ball, but Tony not only got the bat on the ball, but uh, put a pretty good jolt into it. Phillies shortstop Kevin Stocker doubled his first time up. Since then has grounded out on line to left. He is 0 for 2. Like so many relievers these days, works from the stretch. Base runners or no. In for a strike. I guess Perez only throws a fastball under duress, huh? <laughs> Got a little bend on everything he throws up there. Nothing wrong with that. Sock down to Perry at first. He'll make the play, and the Cardinals have won this one. You're watching Philly Baseball on Sports Channel. Now, John Hughes brings one of your all-time favorite cartoon characters to life. Smile. For a whole new generation to discover. Don't embarrass me. You'll love Mr. Wilson. That kid, he's a menace. Mrs. Wilson. The Mitchells. Margaret. We can bury you alive. I can pound you up today. Joey. Switchblade Sam. And a menace named Dennis. Kids are kids. Oh. Have to play by their rules. Oh. You have to roll with the punch. You have to expect the unexpected. Dennis the Menace. That's me! A classic kid. A classic comedy. If you're looking for a place to service your car or truck, I've got great news for you. It's a Pep Boys Automotive Super Center. No matter what you drive, their ASC certified technicians are here when you need them, day or night, even on Sunday. For Raybestos brakes, TRW rack and pinion repair, diagnostic tune-ups, even air conditioning. For dealer quality service at prices you can afford, come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Most luxury cars are assembled with spot welds. But for the J30, 
Infinity adopted a process called weld bonding that bonds entire seams. Over time, flex and stress can weaken spot welds. But when the entire seam is sealed, there are no weak points, which means a stronger, safer body that lasts longer. Visit your Infinity showroom. Lease one of the world's most advanced automobiles, now at a very special rate for a limited time. Phillies Baseball on Sports Channel has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. The Yellow Pages, 9 out of 10 people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. The Pennsylvania Lottery, lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For 56 years, the health insurance company you can lean on. For the Cardinals today, seven runs, ten hits, no errors. They leave seven. For the Phillies, three runs, eight hits, two errors. They leave five. Real Cormier is the winner. It's his first victory of spring training. The losing pitcher is Mike Dunn. His first appearance for the Phillies since coming over from the minor league camp. Sellout crowd, 7,195. Game played in two and a half hours. Our Texaco star of the game today is going to be Brian Jordan, the Cardinal outfielder who hit a mammoth three-run home run in the game today hit it off Mike Dunn in the sixth inning the inning in which the Cardinals got five runs and turned around this ball game which the Phillies had led until that point well Teak the Phillies now all even on spring training but as you suggested earlier with the exception of the injuries things not moving along that badly no really Jim Fergosi has to be happy uh, the Phillies didn't score a whole lot of runs today at least for them three is you know an off day but Offense is not his concern right now. The concern he has is with his pitching and, you know, is everybody coming along? Jeff Juden does a nice job today. As we mentioned, five strong innings got out of a couple jams. And Bobby Munoz, even though he gave up a couple runs in the eighth inning, able to bounce back with a ninth inning. It does go out and pitch, you know, three innings, gives up a couple. And uh, didn't get himself in real major trouble. The only real problem he had was the one throwing error. So all in all, I think for Ghost, he has to be happy it up a little bit here in the last couple days of spring training and uh, I think he has to feel that real good about the direction that the ball club's going in. Our next Phillies game here on Sports Channel will be one week from today April 2nd will be at Camden Yards in Baltimore for the final exhibition game of spring training 94. Hope you'll join us for the Phillies against the Orioles beginning at 1:30. so we hope you can join us right here on Sports Channel next Saturday. For Kent Tacovi, this is Andy Musser, and for our producer director Ray Tipton, coming up next on Sports Channel, World Series of Soccer, USA against Bolivia. So long, everyone.